Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the DTM Esports Championship 2022. We have had two incredible qualifying days really last month and the month before. And uh, we also had 26 drivers qualify from that point and also joining them are three wild cards that were taking place at the Nürburgring itself a couple of months ago as well. But now this is where it indeed comes down to. This is where they earn the points and the prizes. My name's Luke Crane and I'm joined by Connery Maddock. Connery, how are you feeling about this one? Yeah, I'm feeling incredibly excited. We've got a fantastic track to start off at Imola. Um, tensions are, of course, high in amongst the drivers. They don't know how this season is going to go from this point forwards. For them, it's all about getting off on the right foot. They can't afford to have a poor performance today, lest that carry on throughout the season. But I'm certainly looking forward to it, Rook. Oh, 100%. Yeah, this is going to be super, super exciting. Again, it's 26 drivers, 26 of the very fastest drivers on race room will be battling out here on Imola with three added drivers, again, who qualified via the wildcards. We'll explain exactly who they are once we get out onto the track. But let's check out then the format for today's broadcast, which uh, is going to be very exciting indeed for us all. So as you can see here, it is free practice has already started. So you don't, you guys don't need to be seeing that really. Uh, the stream start. Well, we're started. You can hear me. We're live. That is how it is. Uh, we then will indeed have qualifying one, which is 10 minutes long. Uh, so it's as simple as the best time starts at the front. The worst time starts at the back. It is simple as that. Then we have our first race, which is a sprint race. 15 minutes, almost like a little warm up, really. Uh, although for the drivers, it means a hell of a lot. It's big points in the offering. Uh, then we've got qualifying number two, which is again, 10 minutes, uh, which is very difficult for these drivers to get their lap times in considering there is going to be 29 of them out there on circuit at the same time. And then we have our final race of the broadcast is a one hour race akin to DTM itself. Their races are one hour long uh, with an endurance race there, 60 minutes, which is going to be super, super exciting. And we are using the DTM 2021 cars, uh, which indeed is super exciting. New cars to see, uh, lots of new liveries as well from the teams and well it is going to be an incredible day's racing let's check out then the calendar for this season so today we're at Imola we've got two races at Imola then we head to the Norris ring which is an absolute treat in itself uh, on the 24th of March then on the 7th of April we head to the Lausitz ring and then we head to Spa Francochamp on the 10th of April. Then it's the Red Bull Ring on the 21st of April. And well, ironically, it's the start of the DTM Championship Portimao in real life. But it's going to be the end of the DTM Esports Championship on the 28th of April. Again, the format will be the same each and every week. 15-minute timed race and then a 60-minute timed race earning super, super amounts of points. Let's check out then the drivers. That's what we're here for. We want to see these drivers. And well, you can now pick your favorite and cheer on who indeed you want to. Uh, we can see there for Arnage Competition, we've got Pinchez, Ottaviani for RHG Esports, Dorniden, then for Tenera uh, Rig uh, Esports, we've then got Dinya, uh, again for the same Esports team there as Dorniden, both in a different car though, a BMW and a Ferrari representative, we've got Vermeulen then for Virtual Drivers by TX3, Hugvelt for RHG Esports, Naji for Mirror Esports, Florian Hasser for Dur Esports, Fiducci then for Team for Dilla, we've then got Isaac Price who is a privateer, uh, which is something we haven't seen really before from Isaac, we saw it in a qualifies but i mean like he's always been a part of big teams it doesn't matter whether he's got that support from a big team or he's just on his own he still manages to get to these parts of the competition we've got keith lee as well from williams esports we've got kevin siggy for team redline rudinger for arnage competition three arnage drivers on the grid uh, we've then got Kripner for Dirt Esports, Whitford for Balash Esports, Vanna for SRC Mavano Corsa. We've then got Rodriguez then, who is driving for Topez de Gamma Racing Team. Gassner for uh, the same team as Dornigan and Dinya. So they've got three as it stands, four, maybe five. They've got five, six drivers, actually. Wow, six. That's the most represented <laughs> team for sure. We've got Payet then for Veloce Esports. We've got Markovic. Uh, we've got Pfeiffer. Rashall for Dur Esports, Morris Lerner, who is our current champion for Dur Esports. We've then got Pliska for Team Fordzilla, uh, Pringer, a second privateer, and then we've got Yashul as your final qualified driver via our qualifying days. And then the three wildcards, then we have got Alex Mosin, we've got Florian Bodin, and we've got Julianne Fox. They will be in the Media Marked car, sponsored, of course, by Media Marked, which is incredible to give them that opportunity. But 29 drivers there, Connery. Have you got a couple there that really spring out to you that could potentially go out there and become our champion of 2022? 
Well, so far in 2022, uh, I, we me I mentioned this to you actually before the broadcast, but it, what I want to keep an eye on is Christopher Hergfeld. Of course, I bigged him up during the shootouts as well, if I, if I remember correctly, in the DTM Championship. But since then, he has gone strength from strength to strength in other esports competitions here on Race Room. So I expect him in that RHG esports card to be at the top of the field fighting. But of course, you cannot count out our regulars as far as the top of the order in Race Room are concerned. Your Moritz Lohners, your Marco Pejic's, drivers like that. They're always going to be up there fighting. Uh, but potentially it might be a driver coming in and uh, upsetting the status quo somewhat. I wonder if uh, how well the uh, wildcard drivers will do in this one as well, uh, taking part in this competition. Yeah, absolutely. They, you know, they are still well-known races in the world of sim racing. There's no real still surprises from the wild cards. It's not like they've come out of absolutely nowhere. They have got some serious talent. That is for sure. The difference is 15 minute time race. Of course, it's going to be frantic. People are going to be jostling for position. Qualifying is absolutely key. And then we've got the 60 minute race where they do have to do a mandatory pit stop and they have to change their tires. Fuel, there is no, they can get, start the race with full fuel. They could go with a lighter tank and try and get some decent track position and maybe add some fuel during qualifying. So there is a bit of strategy in that. What are the big differences going to be in terms of the two races, Connery? Well, of course, uh, that 15 minute sprint race, it, there's not a lot of time to get anything done. Uh, throughout that sprint race. So you're going to be seeing drivers go pedal to the metal, trying to harass drivers for every single position possible. It's going to be fast, it's going to be frenetic, and uh, there might be a couple of instants. But once we get to that endurance race, things will just sort of likely temper down a little bit. Drivers in that first stint will just get themselves into a rhythm. They want to be thinking ahead. They want to be thinking ahead to that uh, first, that one and only pit stop where they have to change the tires, they have to get fuel to the end and see how, how what they can work out with regards to the strategy there. So it's going to be two complete different kind of races here today yeah 100 percent. we are at imola which again is one of the most famed circuits in the whole of europe maybe even in the world one of my favorite circuits i'm actually going there this year uh, with dtm which is going to be absolute fun and well let's have a little track guide here from dtm champion uh, in 2011 and one of the most beautiful men in the history of motorsport uh, martin tomjic Hi guys and welcome to the DTM Esports Championship 2022. My name is Martin Tomczyk and we are facing tonight the season opener in Imola. The DTM Esports Championship is one of the five pillars of the DTM platform. Over 20,000 esports cracks tried to get into the championship in the preseason. Now we have 31 participants. And now it's my turn to try it out. So welcome to Imola circuit, 4.9 kilometers, 17 corners and now we are heading down the long start and finish straight. Actually it's the longest straight on the circuit and best possibility to overtake into the heartbreaking zone for corner number one. Top speed around about 270. So heartbreaking down, third gear, always good to cut curbs into the quick left-hander, flat-out left-hander, into the next S corner. Very quick entry, but a very slow exit. You have to take care to get the exit right here. Then going into the first hairpin, very good place to overtake, but here it's very important to get the right exit uh, to get a great top speed over the quick right-hander. So this left-hander, you have to take care here, stay within two. So here, very difficult to break into the corner. You can easily lose the rear. Now we're coming to the slowest part of the track, the tight chicane. Uh, good to cut here. The curbs, you have to get the right exit without wheel spinning too much. Already coming to the last part of the racetrack. Uh, it's very tricky here the braking point because it's downhill braking and these last two corners are very important to get the right exit uh, for the start and finish straight again. Okay guys now this was my lap. I'm looking forward for your laps. 
at the season opener of the DTM Esports Championship. I keep my fingers crossed for all of you. Have a great battle out there. Be fair, be hard and enjoy your first race. Great to see a lap there from a, and I hate this term, former DTM champion. It's almost like as soon as somebody else wins it, their championship gets taken away from them. Is always going to be a DTM champion, Martin Tomczyk there. And uh, you see he was genuinely enjoying himself there in the sim. And well, he was in a Ferrari. He was in Alex Albon, Albono himself, as I had to deal with in the chat every single time I commentated last year. Uh, and well, we are very happy to announce that the DTM 2021 cars will be out on race room tomorrow including the ferraris as well i know everybody's super excited about the ferraris so that is coming to race room tomorrow oh boy i cannot wait to be looking at those cars it's going to be great stuff um and well it's exciting for us connor isn't it because for me personally i get bored of looking at the same cars over and over again so to see new cars in an esports championship makes me very excited as a commentator yeah, it's just another option. Of course, you know, it's uh, sometimes uh, quite difficult to get Ferraris in some sims. I'm glad uh, that race room uh, have been able to uh, sign on the dotted line, so to speak, and uh, Ferrari to get their, their cars involved in this sim. And, uh, well, it seems to be a relatively popular choice for this championship. I'm just having a look up and down the order right now. Yes, we've got a smattering of BMWs. We've got, a, uh, we've got an Audi involved. We've got a Porsche and, a, and uh, lots of Mercedes. But it seems like a good, well, just shy of half the fields are all Ferraris at the moment. So it seems like a popular machine. Yeah, well, of course. It's, a, it's the, same, the same as every sim out there, right? They bring a new <laughs> car into the game. They make it overpower. So everyone buys it. Come on. You know how it works, Connery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, it's a new car. Everyone's really excited to do that. So yeah, they absolutely are going to decide to pick um, pick the Ferrari. It makes sense that that's the newest car in the game. It, you know, they're going to be excited to choose it. Uh, well, so that's new. Something that isn't new is Kevin Siggy. Kevin Siggy is pole position early in the early stages here. Um, looking at the grid, I'm pretty worried for Moritz Lerner, if I'm honest. I think Moritz Lerner's got his work cut out if he wants to become a two-time DTM esports champion. Uh, but as it stands, he's come out swinging here because he's second position in the BMW. So two names that we're used to seeing at the front end. We've got Krippner then in P3. Markovic then, uh, the Montenegrin driver, is in fourth. And then we've got Privateer, Isaac Price. When there's an esports competition, there's an Isaac Price always learning somewhere uh, but as you can see it's again it's Kevin Siggy isn't it he's always in and amongst it yeah he is top of the order in qualifying at the moment is uh, uh, the driver from Slovenia we are on board though with Moritz Sona of course previous DTM esports champion and I just got to say ever since getting that championship win Moritz Sona has gone from strength to strength not only in the sim racing side of things as well but of course in the real world uh, as well he's certainly making his mark and he's uh, well, causing teams and other drivers to really take notice of him and to take the uh, the whole sim racing business seriously because it can translate into performances on track as he heads his way across the line. Not good enough this time to get himself up into pole position, still two tenths off. But uh, Moritz Lohner is, a, I feel, a good Im ambassador for sim racing. Yeah, 100%. I get the privilege to um, work alongside him with DTM uh, myself, and he's a lovely chap. He really is a lovely chap as Kripner goes up to P2 here. So that's a bit of a surprise there that Kripner has made it up there. Uh, he is in second position with Lerner just in behind, but again, a full tenth of a second in this kind of field. Siggy is really showing his skill set. But yeah, last season, Lerner, he managed to get himself a test in DTM Trophy via winning the DTM Esports Championship in 2019, was it 2020, 2019? All the years now are just merging into one for me personally, um, with what's going on currently in the world. Uh, so yeah, he managed to get himself a test. He performed exceptionally well in the test. They gave him the first week media mark themselves. They gave him the first week at Monza for this um, season, last season in the DTM Trophy. And he did exceptionally well. Got himself a couple of top tens. And well, then he got given the full season with FK Performance Motorsport and just did not look out of place at all. Uh, so it's been really good to see his journey. But not just that, he's just every single competition he touches he's right up in and amongst it as one of the top drivers he actually won division one on iRacing in the porsche cup by the way um just he got a certificate today from season <laughs> one so like he's even transferring it over to a different game which is very very difficult to do especially with that car specifically so yeah he is an incredibly talented driver um and jack keithley by the way someone else who's very intelligent uh, ve who came second actually to learner he's p4 so it doesn't matter whether you add someone like siggy or Kripner into the 
uh, fold, those two still tend to be right up in and amongst it, don't they? Yeah, they do. Uh, pretty much every single race room, esports race, and, and even off race room as well, in the case of Siggy, he's always uh, up there and, and, and challenging for the top couple of spots. So seeing Crippen ahead his way across the line now, again, not gonna, quite going to be good enough to improve here uh, in this situation. Siggy, definitely the time to be at the moment, and look at where he is. He's just sitting there down on pit lane. That seems to be a lot of confidence coming out from Kevin Siggy. He doesn't feel the need to get back out there. He doesn't think he's going to be challenged. Yeah, but he's got that kind of confidence, that kind of swagger. I was actually commentating on him last night in the uh, VCO ERL uh, Spring Cup, and it was on ACC, so a game that he's not really that comfortable on. Still went out there and got a race victory during the, the, the day, and he was someone that was getting faster and faster as the day went on as well. But this guy is an absolute specialist on everything that he turns his hand to, and what a way to kick things off if he was to go out there and potentially get a pole position. But I tell you what, Moritz Lerner is a full tenth of a second up. You can see S1 there is purple. That means that he is indeed going faster. As Ottaviani moves up into P4 here, he will get another opportunity. We've only got a couple of corners to go. We head then down in towards that final double left hander. Is there going to be the potential for him to make up some positions uh, through Ravazza? We will indeed come using all of the curb on the exit here. Well, you've got to just get on that power as early as possible, but just do not run into that gravel. It will lose you so much time. I think he's lost a bit of time here in all fairness. He is going to go faster. Is it going to be enough for Paul? I don't think so. Is it enough for a front row start though? It could potentially be. Across the line he goes. It is not good enough. So he gains six hundredths of a second uh, and he does not have time to finish this next lap. So he is done for here. Anybody at the cross of the line now are done. And you may think that's a little bit odd. Basically, as soon as it hits zero on race room, the qualifying is over. So you have to make sure you finish your lap time before that indeed finishes. That Keithley was up on his time, I think. Um, we've got Florian Hasser, who's currently uh, in P6 here, Connery. Four tenths off the pace, and well, going very, very quickly through second number one. A full tenth up on Siggy's time. Yeah, and uh, well, as long as Hasser can link up a second and third sector here, Siggy might not be as safe as he thinks. We'll see what the sector time is for sector two. It's not purple, but it is a personal best there for Florian Hasser. So there's still something in this lap as he heads his way uh, on this little run down the hill in towards the Ravatsas. The results will show a little early here. We have to wait for confirmation. Uh, but either way, Siggy pole position for the moment. Uh, so we got a sneak peek of page two already. Yeah, Vermeulen's popped up into the top uh, five, I think. I think there's a, uh, I think also Fiducci. So I think Fiducci and Vermeulen have both just put themselves up into the top five or top six, should I say. We're waiting for it now. Uh, Vermeulen, yep, yeah, uh, Fiducci did, but look at this, Hookvelt, your tip today is up to P6 as it stands. But I tell you what, it is Kevin Siggy who just is out there trying to win absolutely everything he possibly can, but he has got Moritz Lerner merely a couple of positions behind. He will want to defend this championship with his absolute life there. Uh, but, well, that's all the 29 drivers as it stands. Looks like Florian Bodin just didn't get a lap time in effectively. Uh, Manu Rodriguez as well. Doesn't look like he got a lap time in. He's the sole Porsche on the grid. But it's Siggy, Krippner, Lerner, Ottaviani, Isaac Price, Vermeulen, Hookvelt, Vitucci, Keith Lee, and Petr Pliska as your top 10. What a top 10 that is, Connery. Yeah, absolutely incredible. And uh, well, some of the top names in race room all up there, uh, potentially gonna go wheel to wheel in this first race, of course. It's only gonna be 15 minutes long, so it's, it's gonna end basically just as it starts. Uh, hopefully, uh, we can have a good fight of it. I'm just having a look at those drivers that were invited in via the wild card. Alex Moisson was actually the driver that qualified the furthest up the field of those three drivers. He starts P22. Then we have uh, Julian Fox starting in P26 and then Florian Bowden, unfortunately, will have to start at the very back of the grid here today in P29. So those are your wildcard drivers. Of course, not entirely expected to do very well, but it's good that they're competitive and, and can try and make some impact in the mid-pack. And who knows how this race might go. There might be a huge issue at the very front of the field that allows some unlikely names to go through. Yeah, it's 29 cars on the grid here. If there isn't an issue, then they're not, all, they're not trying hard enough. I'm sure we're going to see some sort of carnage, um, especially with the big choke point being a chicane through turns one, two, and three after a massive run down in towards it. So, yeah, I would imagine there's going to be something here. If you can keep your nose clean in the race like this, you're going to gain positions regardless. That is as, uh, as simple as I can put it. Um, and yeah, just pick your opportunity. Do not get involved in anything, and you should be golden. But it's a 15-minute race, Connery. This is, if you've not qualified well here, you're in a bit of trouble, right? It, it, you, 
in and out hour long race. You can probably work your way through if you've got a, an amazing talent around this circuit. But in the 15 minute race, if you are right at the pack, it becomes very, very difficult to grab any big points. Yeah, it, it does. And, you know, there's not too many rounds in this season. Usually in sim racing, we talk about 12 round seasons, 15 round seasons. There's only going to be six rounds of this championship. So you don't have a lot of races where you can have a, a bad one, uh, so to speak. You know, it's, it, you know, it, the, the season uh, requires a lot of commitment from the very get go. You can't afford to have a slow start here in this one. Otherwise, you'll be always uh, scrapping for points towards those latter rounds of the season on the back foot. So, yeah, this race is so, so important at Imola. And uh, it's a circuit, it's, uh, such a historic circuit as well to get things started off on. Um, I, I certainly love it as a track. Of course, it's gone through some uh, quite major changes uh, over the decades. Of course, uh, the most uh, significant of which was when in 1994, uh, Ayrton Senna unfortunately lost his life at Tamburello. Of course, it, it caused the, the whole situation where they had to reprofile the chicanes, both at Tamburello and, of course, Villeneuve as well. And uh, But uh, still, the track at, in its current state is still uh, very, very fun indeed, especially in that middle sector, Luke, where you come down the hill here uh, and then get yourself into Aqua Minerale. It's always a, a bit of a roller coaster. Yeah, 100%. And that's the sort of position on the circuit where if you're behind, you just got to try and offset somebody. Maybe just get your nose up on the inside because you're just leaning on the weight transfer of the car so much there. So, uh, And if you force a driver to be on the power maybe a little bit too early, they can easily lose the rear and spin out. So, yeah, as much as it's not really an overtaking opportunity through that part of the circuit, if you can put enough pressure on, you can force a mistake and ultimately gain a spot. Uh, we've already allocated some points here. So qualifying uh, it is indeed three points for P1, which is Kevin Siggy. Uh, second position was Klipner, uh, Kripner right uh, for Der Esports. He's going to pick up two points. And then Moritz Lerner is going to pick up one point for finishing in first, uh, sorry, in third position. Uh, in the race then, this is how the points are broken down. We've got 40 points then uh, for P1, 34 for P2, 30 for P3, 27 for P4, it's 24 for P5, 22 for P6. Seventh position is 20 points, then it's 18 for eighth. Ninth then is 16 points. In the top 10, you get 14. If you get 11th position, you get 12. If you get 12th position, you get 10. Then it's 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and 4. Um, and then you've got 3, 2, and 1. So it goes down to P21. And with 29 drivers here, 8 are not going to get points. But it just goes to show that if you can, if you do start from the back, and indeed you do keep it clean, there is a big chance that you will end up getting into those points paying positions because, well, 21 drivers get them. I, I do like the wider points format like that. Of course, there, you know, there are some series where the points are more restrictive. It's only the top 10, for example, following, for, uh, you know, following along with Formula 1 in the real world. Uh, but I, I think extending the points down to those more minor positions actually causes the racing back there to be a little bit better because uh, sometimes you might find some drivers uh, realize, oh, they're out of the points, so therefore these positions really don't matter. You know, the, the racing uh, side by side with someone, they, they're just going to have uh, try and have a little bit of fun and, and try and play some shenanigans and so what but um, if there are points uh, on the cards for those drivers lower down then maybe they'll be able to take things a little bit more seriously and we can have a bit of a better race uh, back there than we would otherwise and of course it keeps their interest in this season as well 100% right Salvo Popovic is supporting Matija Markovic for the win so I'm keeping an eye on the YouTube chat here ladies and gentlemen cars who are you predicting to get the win? So I want to see your favorite driver. Who do you think is going to go out there and get the dub? We're on board here with Markovic. Nice bit of camera time here for the Montenegrin. It's hard to say that. Uh, driver. There's Julian Fox then. Uh, as you can see in that media marked car. The sponsor, the title sponsor. Good to see them indeed supporting, continuing to support the DTM uh, franchise. So we've got someone very excited in the chat about Ferrari being in race room. Rapid man, fire. There you go. Yes, it's here. And it's out tomorrow. So you can go and get it on race room tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be a good time indeed. Just nine seconds to go. And then they've got 60 seconds to line up again. Get your predictions in the chat. Who do you think is going to go and do well? Who do you think is going to go out and win this race? It's only race number one, remember. We've got two races tonight. 15-minute race and a 60-minute race as well. Points are the same for both races. So interesting to say the very least. Give me a prediction then. Who's winning this race? 
Uh, it's it's going to be very, very difficult to tell. I think Lona, in particular, he's had a pretty... Uh, I, I'm sure he won't mind me saying he's had a pretty poor start to his 2022 race room career for, for, for this season. Uh, so he definitely wants to be making an impact here. Starting P3, second row, fantastic place to start. Uh, let's see the, uh, the previous DTM champion get back to the top. Why not? Okay, yeah, wow, it's a pretty safe bet that he's going to be in and amongst it, or there or thereabouts, that's for sure. I think it's going to be a nice dynamic that we're going to be watching uh, Ferrari versus BMW at the start of this race. And also, they're locked in now. Once they've chosen their car for this race, ladies and gentlemen, cars, that is it. They are stuck with that car for the rest of the championship. So, with the BOP, there's going to be cars that are faster at certain circuits than others. Moritz Lerner from Lewis Pop. Uh, Kevin Siggy's going to do well from Brett Metcalf. Mm -hmm. uh, Miguel Amarin is just talking about more cars. You, just, you can't keep everyone happy here. Uh, just more cars, more cars, more cars. Uh, Naboja is supporting Markovic. Here we go then, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to get underway here. Waiting for those red lights to appear at the top of your screen. And then we will get... Well, we are going here as we've got a rolling start. So uh, we will go round the first lap. And then it goes into a rolling start, as you have in the DTM as well. And should give us around about 15 minutes of racing here. So it will be Siggy that takes them away. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? You know, we get this whole lap here to build up the tension, get excited. Uh, anyone else? Moritz, who else? No one else? No, no one else is going to be giving us predictions as to who they think is going to do well. Um, how important is it going to be that there are two Dirt Esports drivers behind Kevin Siggy here? Uh, they're going to be able to work together? Um, is it a case of Lerner? I know it's really early in the championship and we're already talking about potential tactics, but <laughs> is there a case for that number one car to help his teammate out here? And, and if he's not able to make an overtake, slow the rest of the pack down just to guarantee some good points for his team? Or is it a case of they're just going to go out, you know, hell for leather and get it done? Look, it's, it's, it's always helpful, always helpful to have a teammate uh, in any race, let alone near you in any given race. So Kripner and Lona, they have a lot of options here. Um, maybe not when it comes to the uh, sprint race, but of course, when it comes to the actual endurance race a little bit later on, they can try some interesting things with regards to strategy, keep one car out just to keep applying the pressure when one car comes down in and tries to get an undercut. You can do it the other way around as well. Uh, so for Dora Esports, having those two cars up there is a huge, huge advantage compared to Kevin Siggy, who's, who's basically all alone and uh, has to be looking in his wing mirrors all the time. But these guys continuing on single file at some point here in sector three, they'll get themselves double file for our start. And of course, there is a restart zone that these drivers will have to pay attention to as well. So um, you, you can't be getting yourself a penalty in the first two seconds of the race. No, absolutely not. So you've got to, you know, take care of this situation. Make sure you get off the line well, but not too well. Don't give yourself you know, an uphill battle for the rest of this race. So here we are then, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the sprint race. We've got the endurance race to come up for you a little bit later in the broadcast. But this is around about 15-minute racing uh, here. Siggy will take us away in pole position. Kripner is in second. And then we've got Lerner and Ottaviani as your second row of the grid. And well, let me know, ladies and gentlemen, in the chat right now where you're watching from around the world. I want to see where you are watching from. We saw well, someone put in the chat earlier on that they're watching from Brazil. So where else are we watching from around the world then? Here we go then, 15 minutes, 30 seconds, around about 15 minutes of racing here for our sprint race. It is Siggy that will take us away here at Imola. It is the DTM Esports 2022 race number one. There are 12 in total and who is going to set their stall here and Siggy gets them away as they cross the line and I tell you what it's a phenomenal start here from Ottaviani. The Dura Esports team are in a little bit of trouble here as Lerner's actually up to P2 from P3. Kripner's going to drop back here and can that BMW make a charge around the outside here of the Ferrari? Gets the overlap. Not quite going to work out here. Ottaviani they're trying to hold on to P3. Not able to do so. As they come through the first chicane then the BMWs have indeed held on to the positions but they swapped over. Look at the speed in the straight line of that BMW of Moritz Lerner. Kevin Siggy holds on to keep the lead. Yeah, he does. Siggy was very much challenged there into turn number one and in towards Tosa, the hairpin coming up the hill. He'll have to try and defend again as Lona tries to go the long way around, but cold tires here at the start of the race. He doesn't get the grip on the outside required to maintain the overlap all the way up the hill. So Siggy lives to fight another day. You pointed out the great start from Otto Viani. Didn't quite uh, capitalize that on much as than he would hope. So he had a big run on the front row, but kind of got stalled out a little bit here at the very start of lap number one into Akamilarale for the first time. 
vast majority of the field single file as uh, Otto Viani gets a very good run off the corner. He might be able to ha ha make something happen into Variante Alta. No, he's just going to stay in line for now. Yeah, it's really good for the front two. It's mean, it means they've been able to drive away ever so slightly here. Siggy, now a half a second advantage here over Lerner. And Lerner still in that slipstream. And we've just seen that the BMW in a straight line is absolutely lightning. But through sector number two, the more technical sector of Imola, uh, really, the Ferrari is a much stronger package all around. Let's get on board with the front two here then. And let's see whether Lerner can indeed close up to him. Look how close they are. Here we go then. Across the start finish line. Oh, a lovely bit of onboard here. You can see the gap is visibly closing down. The BMW has got a head of a steam here. Down and towards turn number one. Siggy will hold that inside line here. Lerner may be going for a fake. He's not going to be able to. He's got that side by side. A little bit of an overlap again. Siggy runs a little bit wide though and the pressure really is on. Lerner oh. is he's on the inside. Not quite going to be able to make that move. And I tell you what, Siggy is all over the place right now. Again, it's a 15 minute race. You know, you've got to You've got to keep holding your position. You've got to defend from the front. You've got to really attack your defensive moves. I think in an hour long race, you've got to be a little bit more placid, but he's doing the job he needs to do here to get maximum points. Yeah, uh, great defense there from Siggy. He knows now, he probably even knew before the race with all the preparation as well, that BMWs are absolute weapons in a straight line. However, the benefit of the Ferrari seems to be through the corners. You saw it through the hairpin there. He's able to gain about a tenth of a second through the hairpin alone. But, you know, the thing that doesn't work in the favor here for Siggy is that Imola has a very long front straight all the way from the final corner in towards turn number one. So he has to try and defend that line every single time, it feels like, in this race. And it only requires one time for Moritz Lona to squeeze his way through. Yeah, he already made a mistake, didn't he? Luckily, he just about had a car's length to work with, um, where on the exit of turn number one, Lerner was just not able to hold that uh, overlap on the exit. Uh, we go a little bit further back here. Uh, the mail has made a position up in from sixth to fifth. Uh, Price, sixth position. Fiducci, Hugvelt, seventh and eighth. Hassa uh, are indeed in eighth and ninth position. Not sure. Is that Pliska in tenth? I think it is. Pliska's in tenth position there, the Italian. We've then got Yashul, Keithley, Dinya, Markovic, Payic, Rashel, Naji. We've got Pinches and then we've got Gassner as your top nine team. And then we've got Dornidon in 20th position. I've just remembered all of those names from abbreviations. What a guy. Uh, we've got Vermeulen then just about holding on to that top five position. But he is under some severe pressure here from Isaac Price. If someone can make a move, it's Isaac Price. He is a pretty aggressive driver, very calculated with it as well. He's gone on the brakes a little bit early here, trying to force that Ferrari offline. And I tell you what, on the exit here, Price has got the outside line. It's not quite going to work out. But again, you can see that he's trying to make something work here. He's got the Ford Zilla. Uh, team of Fiducci just in behind trying to pick up any potential pieces that's left behind by these two uh, but really the front four are just using this to their advantage aren't they? they've just completely yep. driven away Oh, Fiducci sticking one down the inside of Price and Tosa can't get anything done there though it was just a, a bit of a scare to try and get um, Isaac Price offline but he seems to have been immune from a move like that but you can see like, exactly as you said it there Luke the front four breaking away at the moment Axel Vermeulen can't keep up it seems with these guys uh, so this works out in the front four's favour it allows them a little bit of space maybe towards the end of the race to have a little bit of a scrap without those additional third parties getting themselves involved uh, but Siggy has held on to this race lead quite well so far in this one you can see the Ferrari just sliding its way through towards the exit of Variante Alta there. Of course, tire wear, not too much of a problem here in this 15-minute sprint race. However, that will be a little bit more of an issue in the endurance race where they have to do the, uh, uh, well, on average, 30 minute stints. Of course, it is a, a pit stop window that these guys will have to come down in on and uh, we'll see tire performance become more of a factor then. Yeah, 100%. Um, uh, shout out to Tombo Wombo giving us both some gas. Love that. Um, they both made a mistake out of Aqua um, Minerale. They both made a mistake, actually. Both sliding in the rears of the t uh, car already. So uh, very much struggling. And it was Lerner went right to the right-hand side of the uphill section into that final chicane, uh, into Variante Alta. And it, it, there used to be a guttering in that side of the circuit. If, I don't know if you remember that, but it used to be like a... I don't know. It's, it's just like a like a divot where the water yeah. would run through uh, for drainage. Now it's a curve, so you're good. But he's lucky because if it was the old system, he would have been dragged off into the grass there. As soon as you get two wheels into that divot, it just drags you off. Um, but yeah, now with the curbing, you see there the Italian flag curb, uh, curbing. Uh, it's not such a big deal. Um, has anyone moved up from the back end here? Looks like Fox is still P29, right? Uh, Whitford's not had a good time in P27, although he's just moved up to P26. Um, but 
rooting her. E21, you'd expect them to be a little bit higher in the final points man position. But at this stage of the race here, what is it? There's 10 seconds separating the top 22 drivers. That is phenomenal. So, it, you know, as much as I was saying there was guaranteed to be some some action, there's going to be some, uh, some crashes potentially, it just really hasn't been really good stuff from this group of drivers. Yeah, things have been really consistent uh, as far as everyone down the field. We, we've kept everyone. No, no one's retired in this race. No one's had a, a horrible spin and is about 20 seconds behind everyone else. Everyone's sort of in a, a roughly one big train, at least as, as far as this main pack or this, uh, uh, what to use a cycling turn, a peloton is concerned. As we see Tim Yarshall diving his way oh. down the inside of Pilska. Has he overcommitted on the exit of the first Ravazza though? He might have. So Pilska is able to slip back in underneath. Yeah, it just would have cost them both time here, really, more than anything. And it's a struggle, really, when you're up against the same car in front of you because you know the strengths and you know their weaknesses because it's exactly the same as yours. Uh, but also, on the flip side here, he's got a teammate in that Ferrari, and if he can force Pisco to make a mistake here, it could be, well, it's going to be three wide here for sure. Ferrari decides to back out. That could have been, uh, well, that was Dinya, so Dinya nearly. Oh, oh, that's a big spin! Big spin, he just gets the, on top of the curve there. He puts the power down too early as the car's unsettled. Uh, and unfortunately, once the wheels then retouch down on the tarmac, car just wants to do his own thing there. It's like a like a happy dog. It just wants to spin. Uh, and unfortunately, he's going to drop right down. Where is Yashul going to end up? It's P29. So you're battling for a top 10 one second, and now you're P29 just because how close and clean this race has been. Very, very unfortunate there. Um, and again, it's, it's a sprint race. You've got to try and make something happen. But ultimately, you don't want it to have a massive detrimental effect. Getting big points in race one is huge moving forward. Uh, but ultimately, for Yashul, that's not going to be the case today. Uh, look at this. Look at that cars all over the place. Sparks being flung up here. Do you think that Siggy and Lerner are on the limit? Well, judging by what we're seeing on our screens right right now absolutely are we going to see a potential move here connery from learner is he going to be close enough or is it a case of do you know what there's not really any point in making a move get big points move forward to the main race and see what we can do there well for for Lona, i don't know i, I can't get inside his head and, and uh, tell exactly what he's thinking however we know over the last couple of years he's become more of a uh, a cool calm and collected driver than he used to be so he might just be happy just to sit in p2 here take the point uh, and have a look to do something in the endurance race however uh, you can never really 100 percent tell a driver's mindsets especially in these sorts of situations where the race lead is right there and you're getting this big old draft down the straight every single time here's another attempt here for lona looking to the outside but you saw what Segi siggy did there he parked that ferrari right in the middle of the road forced Lona to make a, a big decision, either going to the outside and try and commit to a small gap on the outside or dive to the inside, which will not give him the line in through the chicane. It's uh, it's great defensive driving here from Ziggy at the moment. I'm absolutely loving the uh, the, co the cop cam there for sure on the BMW, but you know these two battling for position Siggy keeps going defensive. Look who's caught up though, Krippner. You would ex you would assume that Krippner's not going to try and dive his teammate. Like I know it's an individual championship right now, but uh, you also got to factor in that it's the top five that win the prize. So the top five will indeed go to a sighting event during the DTM calendar this year, and they will be effectively judged. And the best one out of the five candidates will be given a full paid drive of the DTM Trophy 2023. So. Again, winning the race is great, getting big points is great, but if you can just get yourself top fives week in, week out, every single race, you're pretty much guaranteed to go out there and be in the top five at the end of the championship. So, you know, P2 isn't too bad, P3 isn't too bad, uh, ultimately gives you more of a buffer. Uh, but yeah, this is fantastic to see uh, from the likes of Siggy, Lerner, Kripner up there, Ottaviani, the Malin. You know, I, I'm really, really chuffed to see someone like the Malin as well. Fiducci is another driver that I would say over the last sort of 12 to 18 months, they've really announced themselves in the world of sim racing and you're seeing them now not just on race room but on other sims as well they are really just there or thereabouts in every competition they enter now which is fantastic for sim racing there are so many talented drivers out there right now as we still are on board then with Lerner and Indy Siggy he is going to get that overlap once again here and I think for the first time he's got his nose just about ahead here and I tell you what this might be a move it might be configured it could be beautiful Siggy though still on that inside line the BMW with that pace advantage as we come down in towards this very fast chicane before we head down into the hairpin and it's done Moritz Lerner of course our current champion in the DTME Sports, a DTM trophy driver. He's been patient. He's waited 11 minutes to do so, but he is now in the lead. And look at this, Kripner looking to go through as well. Not quite going to work out. And this is perfect for Lerner. He needs Siggy and Kripner to battle, which means that Lerner can drive away. But there's been a few murmurs that Lerner may be not at the right pace to go out and re well, 
take the championship once again, become a two-time DTM champion. Well, he has absolutely come here and thrown that rumor in the bin as he now leads race number one. Yeah, it was a great move there from Lona, and he's, and he's set that up over the last couple of laps. He's uh, sensed as, oh, Siggy, that's a bit too much of an off-track there. You've got to be so, so careful with cutting the course like that, otherwise you might get yourself a slowdown penalty. Uh, however, it seems like he's been able to get away with it for now, but you can see now trying to drive above his means here at the moment, trying to lock back onto the back of Lona, but Lona already starting to pull away a little bit. Five tenths of a second is the gap between P1 and P2. Of course, Siggy will We'll get the slipstream out of the final corner into turn one this time, but we haven't seen the performance of that Ferrari in the slipstream. We've just seen it trying to defend. We saw the BMW get a huge run. Uh, maybe not the case here with the Ferrari. Depends on the run out of the final corner, of course, uh, but uh, for Lona maintaining that four and a half tenths of a second ahead at the moment. Yeah, BMW just is an absolute rocket ship in a straight line, uh, even though it's punching the world's biggest hole in terms of the size <laughs> of the car for the Ferrari. Uh, but ultimately, there's another BMW behind Siggy as well. And if, I, if, if I'm Siggy, I'm just making sure I get P2. You do not want to be losing any more positions here. He will close up naturally through the middle sector, which we're about to begin. Uh, again, the Ferrari just seems a little... Oh, that's another mistake there. He is bashing on the curbs, and now he's under some severe pressure from Kripner. So, again, it's take it easy, get P2, take your medicine, move on to the endurance race. But I tell you what, that BMW is right up his chuff pipe here as we come up the hill then, come up towards Piratella and looks like he's going to live to fight another day. Siggy though has got this middle sector uh, to his advantage, the Ferrari very much more nimble through the corners on the curbs. But again, he's just taken, uh, you noticed it, he keeps taking too much on exits of corners or, or cutting the corner a little bit too much uh, and ultimately the curbs around here, they are very much raised, especially with those yellow little sort of bumpy curbs as well. It will just send you offline. It will send you off circuit. Uh, and again, it's kind of an Italian style track, right? In terms of you've got the same similar sort of curbs at uh, Mizano. You've got a similar at uh, Monza as well to stop people from cutting the chicanes too much. So yeah, you just got to try and stay online here. And again, take your medicine. Ottaviani maybe looking to try and get a couple of Ferraris there in that top three. Yeah, he's been waiting here patiently as the uh, driver from Italy, of course, in the quite essential Italian car as well, on board with the Ferrari out of the final corner. Uh, so let's see what he can do from this position. He's been this fourth car in this uh, leading quartet at the front of the field, but hasn't made too much of an impact just yet. Of course, there's only so much he can do in that Ferrari with this straight line speed deficit he has compared to the BMW. You can see the BMW ahead. Uh, pulling away despite the uh, Ferrari having the uh, slipstream towards the end of the straight there. That's how much of an advantage uh, that it has. Uh, but uh, but yeah, uh, let's see what Ottaviani can do from here. Of course, Kripner has his sights set on Siggy at the moment. You can see that gap developing for the race lead uh, again. 1.6 seconds, that, the gap that has been pulled out by Moritz Lohner already. That's how strong uh, he seems to be at this stage. Didn't quite hook it up in qualifying, it seems. Uh, but in race pace, it seems like there's no one better at the moment. Vermeil and Price are having a massive old ding-dong here. Look at how far offline Vermeil is going to defend. Up towards Piratella they will come. And I tell you what, Price is very close indeed. If he can nail this middle sector, he will have that long run down into towards turn number one once again. Although it's going to be closest to whether this is the last lap. They cross the line uh, pretty much bang on their qualifying time. So I have no idea as to whether we're going to get one more lap here or not. So I am going to tentatively call this the last lap. But I'm pretty sure we will have one more to go. I, I'm, I'm not quite 100% sure how it's going to go down, but we'll figure it out. Maybe we get two race finishes here for the price <laughs> of one, which is always good. Down and towards then what will be the final double left-hander here through Ravazza and Moritz Lerner is, of course, already a DTM Esports champion. Got his DTM trophy seat because of it, and he's about to come up towards the line here and take the checkered flag. Five seconds to go. It's going to be mighty, mighty close, but I think it is going to be the final lap of the race. Or is it? No, we've got one more. It was right bang on zero. Has he done it? I don't I'm know. Not... No, I think it's one more. Yeah, I'm not seeing him as finished. How about that? It was basically between zero and one second heading his way across the line there. And we go one more. So another chance potentially for things to change further down the field uh, in this battle for P2. Perhaps not all that much towards the very end, but we do, we do have battles further down the order involving uh, Rachel and Payet and others as well. So they'll be very thankful for this extra lap. Yeah, Marco Payet was again racing last night in the VCO ERL. 
Um, so yeah, double duty for him this week, which is, is difficult to prepare for two different competitions, but uh, still doing relatively well. He's going to earn some, some decent-ish points. Uh, Price, as you can see here, is now under a bit of pressure from Gianmarchi, uh, Gianmarchi, Gianmarco Fiducci from Team Fordzilla. I love the Fordzilla livery. I just think it is, it's just so unique and it's just, I don't know what the term would be. I'm a 35 year old man. So it's like, so down with the kids. It's uh, just like, it's like graffiti car. It's just new age. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just sounding so much. I'm sounding like more of a boomer every time I say anything. Uh, but yeah, I just think it's a really cool livery from Fordzilla and it's kind of across all of their games that they do indeed uh, take part in. Learner though, here we go. Take two for race number one. He has got the double left-hander to go here, then the long run towards the start-finish line. And it wasn't easy. Kevin Siggy qualified pole, and he led for, what, about 11 minutes here. But Morris Lerner kept trying to make that move into turn number one. Got the overlap, and through three, he indeed managed to hold on to that position. He is our champion for the DTM Esports currently. And while race one of 2022's version is going to go to that number one car for Dura Esports, it's Moritz Lerner. Siggy takes P2, Kripner P3, Ottaviani P4, Vermeulen takes fifth position. We've got Price, Fiducci, Hassa. We've got Hoogvelt and Pliska as your top 10. We've got a, a hellacious little battle here as three BMWs then cross the line holding hands. A Ferrari there of the number 87. That's one of our uh, wildcard drivers comes through as well. Um, had a bit more pace there around the outside for some reason. Uh, but here are your official results. Take us through it, Connery. Yeah, absolutely. Moritz Lohner takes the race win here in the sprint race, the first sprint race of the season with Kevin Siggy P2, Kripner P3 with Ottaviani in P4, Axel Vemele in P5 of Isaac Price in P6. Then P7, you've got Gianmarco Fiducci, Florian Hasse, Christopher Kvall Petapilska rounds out the top 10. And then, of course, you have the drivers outside the top 10 involving uh, Dinier, Keith Lee, Markovic, Rachel Payic down to P15 here today. And Nagy, Pences, Donoden, Gastner, and Rudinger round out the top 20 cars. Of course, it's down to P21 where the points go. So P21 will go to Max Pfeiffer. He'll get the last point. And then those outside the points, Vanna, Yarshal, Vitvot, Osin, Rodriguez, Fox, and Ringer. I tell you what, you know, we've got one driver to DNF there, but in terms of the 27 cars that did finish, 25.8 seconds between first and last, there was not a lot of incidents in that race, was there? Like, it was really, really that close, which is exceptional for us moving forward. We still, of course, got a 60-minute race to come as well, uh, ladies and gentle cars, which uh, is going to prove to be very exciting as well. They've got the uh, little matter of a pit stop as well. They've got to change tires. They may go with light fuel at the start to try and be quick at the start and then put some fuel in the pit stop. I don't know what's going to go down there. It's going to be really, really exciting. Uh, but that first race... It looked like Kevin Siggy had it sewn up in qualifying. He was a full tenth mm. ahead, which at this level, Connery, is massive. But Lerner, well, yeah, you, you can't bet against him when it comes to DTM Esports. Uh, you, you simply can't. You, you simply can't. And uh, to get this race win, so important. It gives him a bedrock to build off of. Um, uh, and if you're uh, and if you're Kevin Siggy, what, what, what are you thinking now coming into this, uh, into this endurance race? Because it's obvious that... Uh, despite your best efforts on the defense, that move in towards turn number one, if there's a BMW behind you, is so, so strong that if you're in that situation, you're having to defend it every lap. So can Siggy do something in, with regards to the strategy here? Does he go for an early stop, try and get a bit of a gap, and try and make sure that he's outside the slipstream of the BMW, for example, so that it can't get uh, uh, and, and threaten uh, into turn one every single time? I, I don't know what the plan is for, uh, for Siggy, but there has to be a plan. Yeah, it all depends where the pit window is as well. Like, I'm not sure how long the pit window is. I'm sure there will be one. Um, or maybe it's just a free-for-all. Who knows? If it's free-for-all, then, well, we're in for an absolute treat. Well, go out there, ladies and gentlemen. Get yourself some snacks, some drinks, because we have got a second race coming up for you very, very shortly. But we're just going to go for a very, very quick break. Auto Hero is dein Online-Shop für Gebrauchtwagen. Wir verkaufen nur Autos aus unserem eigenen Bestand. Jedes ist von unseren Kfz-Experten general überholt und rundum aufbereitet. Und du erhältst ein Jahr Garantie. So unbeschwert kann Autokauf sein. Finde jetzt dein Auto bei Auto Hero.
Well, welcome back, then, ladies and gentlemen, to the DTM Esports 2022. And it would appear that I may have let the cat out of the bag a little bit early. So you guys watching on this broadcast, well, you maybe got 30 minutes extra time to know about the DTM cars coming to race room tomorrow, including the Ferraris, of course, which everyone's really, really excited about. But yeah, I think the announcement was supposed to be in the adverts there, Connery. But here we are. It's done. It's dusted. The cars are coming. How exciting are we? Is that? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh, crazy, and I hope everyone tomorrow uh, is able to uh, I enjoy uh, everything that these cars bring. Of course, the the, the new Ferrari as well. Um, it's it's going to be absolutely crazy. Of course, you're seeing these drivers sort of have their their early access, so to speak, uh, of the um, of the cars. But uh, but soon it will be released to the wider public, and uh, everyone will be able to uh, get in and enjoy and uh, potentially maybe uh, get yourself used to these cars so that maybe next season you can come and take part as well as we see the first times in our second qualifying session start to be set. Oh, Hookvelt there with a 40.228. That is a very competitive time and that might be that might be very difficult to beat, actually. Siggy is second by eight thousandths of a second. It's not a lot at all. Hassa is in third then, and Lerner is in fourth position. This is how excited I was about the cars. Uh, on Monday, I actually contacted Race Room to get all of the images of the cars so I could set up a league for a couple of weeks' time uh, to start. <laughs> I was like, look, I know the cars are coming at some point. Please give me the images. I need to set it all up. It needs to be ready. And uh, they're like, yeah, OK, sure, good. There you go. And I'm like, oh, my God, it's actually this week. Yes. <laughs> so I've been super, super pumped about it for a long time uh, again as a, as a long time fan of TTM and, and actually having to work with them as well which is always good um, yeah it's kind of exciting to see the cars that I've been watching for the whole last 12 months actually on a computer screen uh, but here we go here we're actually here with those cars but with the team liveries of our esports drivers which I think is a really nice touch here as well as Florian Hasser the Dirt esports uh, team driver is currently in third position but hook felt again he was one of those drivers during the qualifying period of this competition uh connery where he just got better and better and better the longer he was around in it uh, and i think we're seeing the same here today there's gonna be a couple of drivers that have to have used race number one to, for how much they could have learned moving into the endurance race yeah the, this is this is the situation now they, they've had that one race under, your, under their belts of course it's un, under slightly different circumstances compared to what the endurance race is going to have uh, how the endurance race is going to work but they uh, they sort of know how well the racing's gone. And it's gone pretty well in that in that sprint race. We had very few major incidents. We didn't have a major smash. We saw, of course, a big spin or two. But apart from that, everyone was uh, driving within their means. Uh, so that looks good here for this endurance race. Of course, there's an element of when this race starts, you want to try and get on a noisy pedal, get yourself a, a good couple of decisions, uh, benefiting from a good start. But once you know that first lap or so is underway uh, and we've got that under our belts, then, of course, things should come calm down just a little bit as drivers try to figure out where they want to be and what they want to do for that scheduled stop. So the, the drivers will take a little bit more of a cerebral approach to this one. They're going to think about it more. It's not just a um, tunnel vision on the car ahead and try and get the passes done. They're going to take it a little bit uh, calmer than that. And uh, it should result in a good race for, for a different reason compared to the sprint race, of course, with the strategy element involved. Yeah, 100%. And that is the big thing to be thinking about here is that there will be the... The small means of strategy here, they can uh, be a little bit more creative with how they do things. Of course, with that pit stop, uh, I'm just seeing Tombo Wamba in the chat going, if I'm not mistaken, the M6 is not that good with tyres over a longer stint. Well, luckily for them, there's no tyre wear uh, multiplier on this. It is a case of they um, have effectively can do two stints with 30 minutes each in an hour long race if they came in right bang in the middle. Um, it, if you start to feel the tires go off with 12, you know, 20 minutes into your stint, it could be in a bit of trouble, uh, that's for sure. But if you make it to that 30 minute mark, it almost might be worth staying out a little bit longer and just having 20 minutes on unbelievable tires uh, opposed to the um, 30 and then them dropping off once again. So uh, by the way, Siggy is about to take pole position, I think. He has taken pole position yeah. in six hundredths of a second. It's his second pole position if it stays as it is for the day. He hasn't got a race win as of yet. He got beaten by Lerner, but Lerner is currently only in sixth position. Hookfelt, though, is up on his time here. He's one, well, one and a half tenths of a second up on the best time so far of Kevin Siggy. I don't think qualifying is quite over as yet. Yeah, we see top three drivers in Ferraris at the moment. So in terms of 
one lap overall pace in overall pace in relatively clear air. It seems like the Ferrari is the is the manufacturer that you want to go with. But if we saw that the BMWs were so strong in racing mode due to the fact that they can get huge runs over anything that's not called a BMW. But uh, we can see that now. Christopher Hochfeld coming through and out of the final corner, a little bit slower on his second sector um, here. So. Let's see if he's either going to get able to get up to P1 or P2 or remain P3 as he heads his way across the line. Now, not a great sector Ooh. three, so he does remain in P3 for now. Uh, Siggy still towards the very top of the order here in this one. I'm having a look to try and see where Moritz Lona is. Herbal through sector one, not too great of a sector two. It might, it might be an improvement, however, to the top of the order, I don't know. Look at Florian Hasser. Florian Hasser up into P2 here in the BMW. Three hundredths of a second off of Kevin Siggy. Morris Lerner, a terrible middle sector, and needs to figure it out in the final sector. There will be no time to improve. If he doesn't do it now, he has improved. It's only by one spot. He's up to P5, but we know he is capable of making overtakes, and he's got four times the amount of time in the race to go out there and get it. So by my maths, if he does one overtake every 15 minutes, like the first race, he will go out there and win the race. But Fiducci has now just made that even more difficult because he's got up to P2 here and it's by one hundredth of a second. We've got Marv in the chat as well. I owe everything in my career to Marv. He created me as a human being. Uh, great to see you, mate. Hopefully everything's well with you um, there. I'm sure you're uh, chilling on the sofa, having a beer or two. Uh, as Payich, oh. then, in the Mercedes. We've got an AMG up there, uh, Connery. He's got up to P5. Session isn't quite over as of yet. We're seeing page two right now. There's Markovic, Dinya. Uh, we've got Faifa. Um, and then we've got page, uh, page three now. Jack Keithley, Pinches, Dornigan, Mosin, Whitford, Vanna. We've then got Peringa, uh, Fox, and Manu Rodriguez. That Porsche has been an absolute dog today, I think. Uh, unfortunately for him. Kevin Siggy, though, it looks like he's going to take pole position. Jan Marco Fiducci, uh, Hassa, Hugvelt, Payich, Ottaviani, Lerner, uh, indeed, will be your top seven. So Lerner's dropped down into seventh position. So winner for race number one, not having the best qualifying in race number two. Yeah, we're seeing no changes towards the top of the order in terms of the uh, in terms of the last ditch laps, shall we say? So Kevin Siggy still secure in his pole position for the second time here today, and it's an all Ferrari front row as well. Gianmarco Fiducci in the Team Fordzilla car uh, is there in second place as well. Hasse Hoekveld uh, second row, uh, but Falona P7, especially coming off of the back of the race win in the sprint race, that's not ideal. But then again, no, it's not a long ideal, race. but. When you've got P1 in your back pocket from race number one, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. And he also knows he's capable of making overtakes, where not everyone can say that. Uh, Fiducci is a big surprise there. Oh, I say surprise. Again, he's someone who's been improving over and over and over again. Uh, I love race room because you always see this. People speeding in the pit lanes. Great for a race. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see how this goes down in this race. We've got four and a half minutes of warm-up. Kevin Siggy now knows he's got to be wary of the BMWs in a straight line. I'm sure he would have known that anyway, but more so now. But he's got a Ferrari behind him. Can he keep Fiducci behind him? Fiducci, I think if he wants to go out and win this race, has to make the move on the first lap. Yeah, I think so as well. And uh, well, there's well the good thing for the Ferraris at the moment is pending a good start from the BMWs. There's only one BMW that's in the thick of them at the moment. That's Florian Hassa starting in third place. So, um, so th this changes the complexion of the event a little bit. Of course, we saw in that sprint race uh, things get shuffled towards the very front of the order from the get-go, pretty much, as uh, we saw Ottaviani in that particular instance getting himself a very, very good start from a couple of rows back. He's starting a couple of rows back again in this uh, in this event. So potentially. Uh, same thing needed for Ottaviani, but uh, yeah, gaggle of Ferraris towards the very front. Um, I expect them to have the early pace as well. Um, whether or not they can bring enough gap on those cars behind still remains to be seen. But of course, we got the strategy uh, to think about in that one as well. I certainly can't wait to get things going. It's uh, it's going to be uh, quite telling for the rest of the season, I get the feeling, especially with the differences between the manufacturers. Uh, what goes on here at Imola might uh, give the drivers a bit of a better insight to how things are going to go in later rounds of the season, such as at the Norris Ring, Lausitz Ring, Spa, Red Bull Ring and Portimao. Well, we've just seen two Ferraris make love to each other there, so expect <laughs> some baby Ferraris in nine months' time. Uh, was, it's always fun to see that in their natural habitat. Um, right, we've got three minutes to go here. Let's have a look at the calendar for this season. Um, we have not only got Imola, this is only the beginning of the championship this year. Uh, so we head next time out to the Norris Ring uh, on the 24th of March. The Lausitz Ring then is the next one in the calendar for round number three 
taking this on the 7th of April. Spa Franco Shaw is on the 10th of April. Then we've got the Red Bull Ring on the 21st of April. And then the 28th of April is Portimao. Lots of stuff going down in April. What a month that is going to be. Um, let's check out then today's format as well, just to give you a little clue or indication as to what has gone down so far and what to expect from the next uh, rounds this season. We have got qualifying, uh, which is 10 minutes for each race. But there's two races. One is a sprint race, which is 15 minutes. And then we've got an endurance race, which is 60 minutes. They earn the same points uh, from 40 down to 1, uh, from P1 down to P21. Uh, so that is for both races, the same point system. Uh, but let's check out then the entry list here. So you can maybe pick your favorite car or even uh, have a look out as to who you could be looking out for. Because, you know, my favorite thing about racing cars is the colors, the liveries, the schemes. And sometimes you may, maybe there's people here watching for the first time are like, I don't have a favorite sim racer, but I really like pink. So I'm going to go for Pinches, and I'm going to go for Rudinger. Oh, well, I like green. Well, if you like green, you've got many options there. You've got Dornadin, Dinja, Vermeulen. Uh, you've got Gaston, Markovic. You've got Pfeiffer, and you've got Yarshul. If you want to support the Media Mark boys, the, those are the drivers that are the, the back three. They're 27, 28, and 29. They have qualified via our wildcard and are indeed the Media Mark sponsored cars. Well, you can go and find them. They are bright red. Uh, we've got Mosin. Uh, he is actually representing Balash Esports, but in a Media Marked car. Uh, we've got Odin, who has represented Deutsche Payment Esports. He's in the red Ferrari as well. And then you've got Julien Fox, who is ra uh, racing for TR, powered by Geeks Energy. What a team they now is, by the way, in the red BMW. So there you go. Pick your favorite car there. And well, then we can have a bit of fun, right? So maybe you're just sat here casually watching. But it's always good when you're rooting for someone. Let's head back out onto track then as we're about to get our formation lap underway. 45 seconds to go. A little bit of a different... Uh, outlook in terms of the qualifying result here, Connery. Uh, does that change your opinion of who's going to go out there and win the race? Have you got anyone particular you're looking out for? I think Siggy this time, uh, given his closest competitors from last race, a little bit adrift in qualifying. Siggy has a very, very good chance. But we're, we're sort of taking shots in the dark here a little bit because, of course, we don't know how the strategy is going to work out. We have no races previous with these cars in this sort of racing with an hour race with a pit stop in the middle. We, we don't have that information to be able to uh, to be able to judge. Of course, we had the murmurings of the BMWs being a little bit uh, poorer on their tires throughout the longer runs. We'll see if that comes to fruition. But if that's the case, the Ferraris have a good chance. And, of course, the Ferrari that's at the top of everyone's lifts is Kevin Siggy. Yeah, well, that was Tombo Wombo in the YouTube chat. If there's something I've all, I've, I've learned over the years of being a broadcaster, never believe anything that's said in the YouTube <laughs> chat. So, you know, the BMW may be the best out of everyone in terms of tires. Uh, but, yeah, some of the stuff I've read in the YouTube chat is just mind-blowing. Um, but, yeah, again, could, Tombo Wombo could be right. Who knows? But can you trust someone called Tombo Wombo? You know, you wouldn't put your house on it. <laughs> uh, again, only having a bit of fun here, ladies and gentlemen. Only having a bit of fun. 50 seconds to go. They're all going to grid up here. They've got one full formation lap. Again, it is absolutely vital. They don't get themselves a penalty uh, on the start. So make sure you start at the right time. It will be Siggy that take us away. He's got a Ferrari, a Fiducci, to kind of back him up here, whereas he was under assault from the Dur Sports drivers of Kripna and indeed uh, Moritz Lerner last time round. Uh, he's got a little bit of a buffer with another Ferrari behind him. So excited to see how this goes down. Uh, everyone's taking their time a little bit more so this time. If they don't uh, ready up for the 30 seconds, they will just be put onto the grid anyway. So just as well do it early. But as you know, it's in racing, Connery. There's always at least one. Yep, there is. And, uh, well, hopefully these guys know that this is a, a pretty big deal. And uh, <laughs> they get themselves all uh, ready. And, in fact, they are. So we have, of course, that extra three minutes on the timer just to get this rolling start in. And, uh, well, to... Um, to get us going here for the endurance race at Imola. So we've had a little bit of a prelude here, Luke. We've had a um, we, we've had a slight little look into how the racing is going to be today. But this is, of course, is the main event. And uh, well, I can't wait to get it started. Everyone off the way. Uh, seems to be no dramas further down the field. Siggy leads them uh, single file through on this formation lap. I can pull up the standing on the left hand side as well, just to remind you where everyone is uh, for the moment. But yeah, this is uh, this is a big one. Like I said at the start of this broadcast, Luke, it's it's going to be quite high tension for the drivers, and I think it's going to be the the case here uh, as well for this race start. They know what's on the line here uh, for 60 minutes of racing. Yeah, 100%. I think it's going to be quite highly strung here as well. I'm pretty excited for this. I, I yeah, I 
Whew, my heart is beating through my chest. I love this stuff. This is what I live for. Um, uh, we've also got someone saying hello to us here. Jacques Duplessis. I'm going to throw it out there. That's the most South African name I've ever heard. I'm sure you're from <laughs> South Africa. If you're not, then, well, you learn something new every day. Um, but, yeah, well, hi, mate. How you doing? Hopefully you're all well. Uh, right, here we go. It's race time here then. So we have got ourselves half of a lap left to go in the formation. And then it is a full one-hour long race here. So it's a long one but I'm sure we're going to get some excitement here. There's going to be a mandatory pit stop here. That's going to be something that these drivers may use in terms of strategy just to get themselves out of maybe some traffic if they can pit early. Um, yeah, it's uh, super, super exciting, and it's just something a little bit different here. Nice to have two completely different uh, ter ter races, two different disciplines, if you like, in terms of length and time. So it should be good. Segi then will take us away to come back up the hill here. And for me, I think the Ferraris are going to struggle for their tyres. Judging by the way the line Siggy was taking, who's probably one of the more smoother drivers in the world of sim racing, um, especially being right at the top of the uh, charts in terms of talent, he was all over the place. He was hitting over curbs. He was, well, no more so than Gianmarco <laughs> Fenucci. He was off there to Mizano, I think. Uh, but yeah, it, it seemed like the Ferraris were struggling more than BMWs. And also, once the BMW got ahead of them, they really were struggling. So yeah, I think it might be the Ferrari that might be the, the, the car that will drop off the quickest. Well, we don't have to wait too long until we see here. That's for certain here, Luke, as uh, we look to try and get this race started in just a handful of moments' time. Here we go, one corner to go then. It is race two of the DTM Esports 2022. Hello, Pim VM. Hopefully you're well. Enjoy the race, my friend. Everybody out there in the chat, get yourselves involved. Let me know where you're watching from, who you're supporting, as they all go in two by two. It's like Noah's Ark here. Well, let's hope this race isn't too big. Across the line, we're about to go. Kevin Siggy will take us away. Fiducci in second spot. It is two Ferraris then. And then it's the first of our BMWs. And it is Siggy that takes us away. He gets a very good start once again. And Otto Viani, very similarly to what we saw in race number one, that number 74, is looking to potentially make it three wide. But he doesn't this time. But it's three wide behind. It's Marco Pejic and that number 14, that AMG, the white AMG on the inside, is looking to come through here. It is three wide. And I tell you what, fair play to Fiducci. He holds on to that position. Uckfeldt was getting involved there as well. And Florian Hassa, Morris Lerner, by the way, is in seventh position, if you wanted to know where the winner from race number one is. Uh, Dinya and Plisko having a battle here. Price and Kripner are battling for ninth and tenth position. They're side by side here, and I think you'll find that Isaac Price has maybe just about got it, although Kripner's got the inside line down in towards that hairpin. They've got a BMW around the outside. There's Ferraris everywhere. There's a Fortilla AMG just for, just for a bit of fun in the background there as well. There are cars everywhere, but Connery. What a clean start from our eSports stars here. A full one hour to go, and it's been outstanding already. It's not very normal that we get to see clean starts at Imola, but we've had two of them. Although, looking towards the very back of the order, we do see some cars taking uh, the off-track, going for a little bit of a rallycross moment. Oh, it's Keithley! Able to Jack Keithley's yeah, out! Keithley. So second, he's our vice champion from DTM Esports, uh, the, the original, back in 2020. And he finds himself then, well, in the shadow realm. That is not a good start then for Jack Keithley. And he has got it all to do here for that Williams Esports team. I tell you, one driver who's having a whale of a time in this race, number two, Kevin Siggy, has got a huge margin to work with. And yes, it's eight tenths. And I know that may not sound like it's huge, but with this level of driver, that is mahusive. We've got two Ferraris in behind Hoogveld, uh, making a very good run of this with behind Fadu. Gucci Hassa then is in P4. Ottaviani, Payic. Is Payic going to be under, under any kind of pressure here? I think he probably is. Fiducci, though, has got to try and keep Hoogveld in behind. Hoogveld then going to make the run here. He's got the inside line. What's Fiducci doing? Why is Fiducci giving up the inside line? Actually, no. Do you know what? It might be quite clever. Although the contact there has hurt him. The contact there has completely halted his momentum. And now he's under pressure from Hassa in behind. I'm not sure why you leave that inside line now. I don't think the outside line is... is, is I, know, I know you're going through a chicane. So ultimately, if you if you give up the inside line you've got the inside line for the next corner i just don't think it's it's worth doing through that specific set of corners i just uh, yeah i feel like you're going to lose too much there as hassa now it's going to be the next driver to try and make some advancements there the number 46 there makes a little bit of a mistake grabs too much curb turning in and trying to to block the maneuver there uh, but ultimately siggy and hookvelt have now been able to drive away and hookvelt again one second behind might be able to make some advancements towards our race leader 
Good too. He, he's just on the very tail end of the slipstream, as it seems like Fiducci just sort of backing up the traffic behind him at the moment. I'm not like I, like you. I'm not too sure what happened there in towards turn number one. Maybe just maybe Fiducci had it in his mind to just sort of try and get some slingshot action going uh, with Hergfeld, but com has completely and utterly butchered it. And now uh, Florin has to. Um, well, he's looking ahead, but also looking behind at the moment because uh, Ottaviani certainly applying pressure in the Ferrari behind at the moment. It's a big old nose to tail train all the way down the field here, pretty much down to P19 from this uh, P3. So this is, uh, well, a, a big, big cluster. Hopefully they don't have too many problems. Speaking of, Hassa just pushing a little bit wide through the first Ravazza there. That might even give a run to uh, Ottaviani behind. Yeah, I think Ottaviani kind of has to take avoiding action there. Uh, but also the BMW pace advantage in the straight line is going to get him out of trouble. So he's going to be golden, I think. Uh, as you can see, Moritz Lerner then trying to find a gap to work with here on Ottaviani. And Ottaviani instantly defends one way. And he's already made his one defensive move here. You don't want to be making too many because you could be looking at a penalty. And he makes a dive up the inside then for the next position being Florian Hassa. And the contact there is going to have halted his progress. And now Moritz Lerner is all over his chuff pipe here. Down in towards that chicane, the second of our 97 chicanes here at Imola. Too much curve there for the Ferrari. The Ferraris, again, more nimble through the corners, but you get a bit too greedy. You hit those yellow curbs on the inside of the, the Italian flag curbs, and you're in a whole heap of trouble. But the biggest, most important thing here is that Ottaviani has held on to P5. Uh, we're having a few people in the chat saying it's the cleanest turn one in eSports history. <laughs> uh, race room, if you've not tried this game, ladies and gentlemen, the contact physics in this game really do promote the, uh, the door, door banging racing, uh, not all banging, but a little bit of contact here and there. Uh, you don't tend to end up being sent to the moon. Uh, so yeah, it is, it's, it's really worth trying, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to get yourself involved in some esports. And they have esports competitions all throughout the year. Um, I would say, you know, maybe bar iRacing, there's, there's not a game that puts more esports competitions on uh, with brands as well. So definitely get yourselves involved with the game. Uh, here we go, down in towards the end of lap number two. It is still Sigurd that leads. Hugvelt, Fiducci, Hassa, Ottaviani, Lerner, Payet, Rudinger. Uh, we've got Isaac Price who's dropped down now from seventh to ninth position. Gasner as your top ten. And really, for the biggest surprise to me, is Kripner, who finished in P3 in race number one. He's all the way down an 11th spot here. It's not the best of starts. Same with Lerner. And for my money here, I think if Siggy did go out and win this race, he would be our championship leader by the end of the day. Yep, I think the mathematics works out in the favour there. As uh, we're running on board with Lerner again, forcing Ottaviani to go defensive this time around. Commitment around the outside. On the brakes by Moritz Lerner. Oh, he's got him. Oh, the tour oh. margin though. Out into the gravel goes Ottaviani. That's going to be looked at, 100% going to be looked at there. I, I don't think Lerner's Ooh. done a lot wrong, but basically, if you're on the absolute limit of the car and you're leaning on the weight transfer, you, you're just not really in 100% control of the car. Uh, and ultimately, Ottaviani here is being sent out onto the gravel, and that's where you lose a lot of time. He's now being overtaken here for P9, now P10, and he is just dropping like a stone here. He's going to be furious with Moritz Lerner there. Again, Lerner hasn't done anything too crazily wrong there, uh, but ultimately, he wasn't 100% control of the car. So I'd be very surprised if that wasn't deemed as a penalty-worthy uh, incident there from our stewards. Yeah, we, we will have to have a stewards review after this race, of course. Um, the results that you'll see pop up on your screen will be unofficial. Uh, pending stewards review, we'll try and get the updated uh, standings to you as quickly as possible after the race, of course. Uh, but uh, yeah, we still got 53, well, 54 minutes rounding it up correctly uh, until we even get to that point. So we're getting ahead of ourselves uh, just a little bit here in this situation. See Gastner has the train established behind him for P9 Ottaviani. Uh, only fell down to P10, which sounds like a lot of positions lost. However, it could have been so much worse, as, as you can see, pretty much the entire field still in a train behind. Yeah, exactly that. And it's one of those, if you push too hard to go forward, you're potentially going to make an overtake. But if you don't make get it stuck because they're all so quick, you're more than likely going to be under pressure from cars behind and lose more spots behind as well. So it's a, a double-edged sword, as they like to say, trying to make moves here. It's a long race as well. It's, probably worth being a little bit cleverer uh, than just trying to force something this early in the race because ultimately if there's drivers in front of you you think oh I could definitely make a move here because they, they're making mistakes I'm quicker through this corner that's not going to change throughout the race right if anything it's going to get even more pronounced because their tires are going to be going off they're going to lose concentration because it's a long evening's racing 
So yeah, having a bit of patience really is, uh, I think, the name of the game. Siggy, 1.3 seconds in the league. Hoogveld does not look out of place in that top two as well. Leon Rudiger is dropping like a stone here. It's almost like he ran out of fuel going into the corner. But the Ford Zilla team driver then of the with the AMG coming through as well. Rudiger is now down into, what, 13th position. And I'm wondering here, because the curves are very vicious on race room, whether he might have snapped his steering here. That is a thing, and yeah, you use too much curbing around here, you are in serious trouble. Doesn't look like he's crabbing. We'll see on the exit up the hill here. Yeah, he's struggling. There's something not right here. Something definitely not right. I'm not sure what the damage is. The fact that that Ferrari's just able to pull away like it's nothing is uh, a little bit of a worry here. I think Rudinger might be in some serious trouble. Yeah, I just got to pop the tower out of the way just so you can see his steering input. It seemed like it was tracking relatively straight uh, down the uh, down, down the straight bits of roads, but uh, whether or not there's some unknown damage uh, to that BMW, sometimes it can be quite hit, well hidden, at least from a visual perspective, especially if there's damage underneath the car uh, that we, we can't easily see, or if there's damage to the suspension geometry. But uh, for Leon Rudinger, uh, well, He's now in the slipstream of the Ferrari ahead of him. We might have to skip ahead because we do have a battle for uh, P3 uh, going on at the moment. As we see this battle for P12 uh, start to develop, we will have to look away because there's Gianmarco Fiducci trying to keep Hassa. Oh, yeah, he's just about, well, he's just under some severe pressure here. Hassa doing his very best to try and gain this spot here. But again, something we've seen from the uh, team specifically is that they've been patient learner did win race number one but it was being patient he didn't force something with siggy he waited 11 minutes you know he had an opportunity through turn one every single time and i just don't think we're going to see anything different from florian hassa i'll be very surprised if he did try and force something i think it's very clear that that bmw is quicker uh, be interesting to see what happens past the 15 minute mark because of course we haven't seen them race for longer than 15 minutes today we really will get an insight as to what the tire wear situation is like for BMWs and indeed the uh, Ferraris. They're really the only two cars that are in contention. We've got a couple of AMGs in terms of AH, Prisca uh, and Rachel down in P15. Uh, Pfeiffer as well in 19th position. And then Keithley, he's made it back up to P23, by the way. Uh, I tell you what, if he manages to get some points out of this race, that would be an incredible performance from him. And again, he's one of those drivers. If anyone could do it, it's Jack Keithley. He is always there or thereabouts, especially when it comes to race room competition. He is, so, and he has 50 minutes to do it, remember. Uh, it, not usually in this situation, are you, when you have uh, such a long amount of time to try and recover things. So that's going to work in the favor of Jack Keithley. And, uh, well, we'll see how well he does. Back towards, relatively, the very front of the order is Moritz Stoner. Is he going to pull off a move on his teammate here? Is Hassa letting him go? Hassa has let him go. So a swap between the two Door Esports teammates there for P4 and 5. I think Hassa might have more confidence in Lona being able to pull off this move than he is in himself. Yeah, I think the, the, the factor here is Lona's already made a move today, right, on a Ferrari. Mm. Uh, at this top level of esports, they're so similarly paced that making an overtake, you need to have about half a second advantage. So you've got to force something, as we are seeing here, up towards the hairpin. And I think what uh, we're going to see here, potentially from Hassa, is that Moritz Lerner slows that Ferrari down through this sector specifically, and then gives that BMW a chance to tow all the way down into turn number one. So we'll watch out and see how this goes, because there's no way Hassa's given that away for free. But fair play, if, if he's gone for the whole, look, you are quicker than me, Lerner. You can get this job done. The best possible situation is to get it done in the next couple of corners, and he did. So that means yeah. they're going to be wasting zero time here. And again, Lerner just trying to break that toe, trying to make that Ferrari as slow as possible. And he's trying to give Hassa an opportunity. I think you'll find that Lerner will try and slow them down in towards that final couple of corners, because he knows that his BMW is going to be able to drive away. Hassa has got to do his job now got to try and get past here uh, and, and make that whole exchange worthwhile. And we've got another shout here. Oh, Lee saying he loves the commentators. So much love here. You know this is YouTube, guys. <laughs> He's supposed to be slanderous and horrendous to us. But yet, here we go. We've got positive comments again. Hopefully, you're enjoying the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Shardon, sorry, mate. I was only putting you on the spot. Having a bit of fun, mate. Hopefully, you're all well. Um, yeah, what a race we're having, Connery, here. And I think we're seeing the team effect taking shape. We know it's an individual championship, but it's in any eSport ever. If you've got a couple of teammates that you can work with, you're in a much better position. And you know this more than anyone. Yeah. As a commentator for Pest, you know exactly how that goes down. 
well, ex-commentator for Pesk, I'm not on that series anymore, but uh, <laughs> there we go. And so, yeah, it, but you are exactly right. Um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's always good to have that sort of rear gunner if you're that car ahead. Uh, you know you don't have to immediately worry about cars behind. Speaking of worry, though, Fiducci's going to worry about that exit off the corner because he got a whole bunch of oversteer coming off. And now, oh, Hassa leads on him. Hassa half spins him. He's able to recover, though, is Fiducci. It's going to be a couple of lost positions. But my word, that was a little bit too close to confident. And again, the stewards are going to have to look at that one. Hassa might be in a bit of trouble and have to head to the headmaster's office. Yeah, I think he's going to have a telling off, that's for sure. Um, that was one of those where you've had contact with someone having a bit of a poor exit and you've just kept your foot on the loud pedal. Um, you know, you've not backed out there at all. You've just basically driven through them. Uh, Fiducci was a, a hood ornament there, effectively, on the BMW for uh, a moment of time. But the big winner, really, is Marco Payet. Look at this guy here. Again, in the AMG, bit of a surprise to see an AMG up there. Um, of course, it looks like BMW and the Ferrari are the stronger two cars around this circuit specifically. He got a P15 in race number one, which is good points, but he's just there or thereabouts. Can he potentially get past the BMW here? I'm sure the BMW will have a bit of damage as well, because that was a big bit of contact as well, a big old shunt. But um, yeah, it is uh, it is what it is. Yeah, it absolutely is. And uh, well, down on towards the pit lane comes Isaac Price then. Isaac Price down on towards the pit lane. Now, is this penalty related or is this stop related? No, the window's open. Related. Yeah, yeah, the, the window's, window's open. So they They've got the red disc there on the right hand side of the screen, that means the pit window's open. Uh, once that's gone green, so for anyone watching at home, they've got the red box now next to their names. As soon as that goes green, that means they've done their pit stop um, and they have to serve one pit stop. And for Price, it is a strategic move, right? As soon as it's open, it's a case of, right, let's get this done, let's get some decent track position here and we move on. It's not the regular thing that we see from Price though. We, Price is usually one of those drivers that decides to just go as long as possible in that first stint and then come down in at the very, very last moment just before the pit window closes. However, it's a little bit of a change of uh, pace uh, for Isaac Price to come down in now and get the fresher rubber on the car. Of course, a little bit further down the water than he would have wanted. So maybe he wants that fresh rubber uh, just to try and uh, get into a little bit of clear air, set those fast lap times and get the undercut going on those drivers ahead of him to put him in a little bit of a better point. As uh, Rudiger drive through penalty for speed oh. That is a kick in the nuts if ever I've seen one. He has got a, he's just served his, um, his pit stop to try and get out of the traffic. And, oh. oh, and he's just parking it. And he's, uh, yeah, that is a, a DNF for this race here, which I'm going to be honest, uh, the Imola pit lane is, I guess it's on a real fast part of the circuit as it normally is, but I don't think you lose too much time. If you're someone of Rudiger's pace, I feel like you could get back up into some points paying positions but here we are it's done he's in the pits he's going to be over leonard kripner is just dropping further and further uh, back here had a very good race number one needs to start making some positions up as early as possible as we have got ourselves p7 into the pits as gasner into the pits he comes and yeah this is nice to see a split of strategy here a lot of drivers coming in early i'm sure we're going to see the the leaders wait until the last second and then i'm sure we're going to see people sort of seventh eighth maybe down into towards p15 I'm sure they're all going to wait till sort of midway, halfway through the race. Yeah, so Gastner in at this lap. We've got uh, Alexander Dornaden also heading his way down in. So the uh, two Germans uh, heading their way uh, and, and getting those fresher tyres. And of course, uh, they're trying to fuel up to the end of the race as well. So these drivers, they, they'll obviously be benefiting from the fresher rubber basically on lap two of their stint. It takes about a lap for these tyres uh, to try and get themselves up into the correct operating window with regards to the temperatures and the pressures. Uh, so from lap two of their stint onwards, they're going to be absolutely flying compared to everyone else. However, of course, that that uh, situation switches towards the end of the race when everyone else comes down in. Of course, you know, for those that have been in motorsports for a while, even in esports as well, of course, that's the most obvious thing. But we might have some new viewers that might not understand how the strategies work in this sort of thing yeah of course we've got to make sure that everybody understands what's going on because i'm gonna be honest with you i don't I, I, that was good for me connery i struggle to understand most of the time if i'm being completely honest i just get excited to see vroom vroom cars go around the track it's really as simple as that for me uh we've got markovic probably the most supported driver in the stream i would say uh in terms of youtube today he is currently uh, residing in p13 but a couple of cars have pit in front of him under a little bit of pressure here actually from naji the hungarian on race room, there is always a Hungarian when it comes to esports, and I'm going to go as far to say on every esports competition ever, there is always a Hungarian. And that is a lean on to pass there, if, if, if ever I've seen one. Not the worst thing in the world, but uh, I would say that that's, uh, yeah, not, not the most ideal. 
Christopher Hergvall down on towards the pit lane, so this is the driver in second place. So he's deciding to come down in well before the halfway point, not the earliest driver to come down in by any means, but he's shown his hand now, Luke. What is the response from Kevin Siggy in particular? Does he continue uh, and try and at least get towards the halfway point on his own strategy? What does Moritz Lohner do to try and respond as well? Moritz Lohner has been flying out there, by the way. On that last lap alone, he... he Eat into it, eat into Siggy's lead by about two tenths of a second. So the performance is still there for Marcelona, so he might even be able to afford to stay out just that little while longer as well. Yeah, for sure. It's one of those where Lerner just didn't qualify well, did he? It's as yeah. simple as that. Because, you know, historically, we've already seen the qualifying session today, so we know what performance they can achieve. He just didn't achieve it in race number two. Uh, probably too busy drinking his champagne from the race win in race number one. Um, but, yeah, as soon as he's got a bit of clear air here, he is absolutely flying towards Siggy. I, I think the Ferrari struggling on tyres. I really do. I think if we, when we get to... This is much... Uh, a power circuit right so the bmw is going to be the stronger car when it comes to technical circuits i think over a short run this ferrari is going to be untouchable but it's tire wear in the longer races is going to be a problem I, that, that's from what i'm seeing right now yeah uh, uh, th that's my point of view as well and there's the response from siggy he immediately on the lap after hoogfeld he comes out down on towards the pit lane does Lona follow him? I don't think so. I wouldn't have thought so, and he does not. So at least, at least one more lap for Moritz Lona. There's no reason really to come down in if you're still setting blistering lap times, is there? Yeah, but is this a case of we might be seeing a two-stop strategy from some people? Because if you're coming in now, if you're struggling now, if you're Siggy, right? You've got four, you've got, dub, you've got to do double what you've just done on your tires. So is this a case we are going to see a double pit stop strategy here from a few drivers? I don't know whether that's... Is, is, is the drop-off significant enough to warrant that? I'm not sure. I mean, in other series, we do see a good handful of drivers always come down in early at the first opportunity and, and to have that second stint be the long stint, uh, so to speak. But a uh, two-start strategy in this sort of race? Uh, I don't think so. Um, at least I wouldn't have thought so. If it no. is possible, then then we, we might as well just throw out all the preparation we made before the broadcast and just uh, say whatever but uh, yeah uh, two yeah two stops I think might be a bit too over optimistic uh, considering the race length yeah but your so your background's more eye racing right so you they, they have a big drop off but there's no such thing as like punctures and stuff in eye racing it just yeah. kind of just drops off drops off with race room you get a puncture you, you're done you know so it might be a case of the Ferraris have to? I don't know. But I guess we'll find out, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, Siggy's the only one who's coming. If, if everybody else dives in now, I think that there is a, that there is the potential for it. Uh, the pit window would still be open in another 20 minutes time. It's going to be a 30 minute pit window by the looks of things. So there is the options here. Let's watch and see if everybody, I tell you what, the, that AMG did not look comfortable going on the power there on the exit, but not into the pit. So yeah, okay, Siggy's probably going to go for a long run here. And it was a case of, I think learners catching me. I'm a bit scary here. Uh, let's get go out there pumping some really quick laps just so I have track position when he does eventually pit. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep a close eye on the lap times here because Lona, he did a 141 flat that last time by. I'm, I'm waiting to see a representative lap time come in uh, from those drivers that have come down on towards the pit lane. Of course, uh, Siggy is uh, coming towards the end uh, of a lap right now in relatively clear air. So this will actually be a good baseline for us to have a look and see what the performance in the fresher tyres is uh, for the Ferrari compared to the uh, older tyres of the BMW. As long as this is a clean lap here, we should get a good representation uh, from Kevin Siggy. So it was a 141 flat last time on all tyres for Moritz Lohner. What's the lap time going to be for Kevin Siggy across the line? As, li as long as it's, it's not invalid, lap. we should be able to see as it's, uh, yeah, it's, out, uh, it's invalid. So we won't be able to tell until next lap. Yeah, it's an out lap there, so it's going to be slower regardless, wasn't it? But um, now's the lap here. I, I just think that's what he's done here. He's just coming early just to go, do you know what? I need to pump in some laps um, just to, to guarantee I'm going to be ahead of, of Lerner um, on this stint. I think he could probably defend from the front then. I think he's if he waited any longer, Lerner was just going to catch him and maybe get track position, and then they both come in at the same time. It kills the chances of him winning the race. But coming in early, he already had that three and a half second advantage. With fresh tires now, he's going to be quicker. Um, so it just means that once Lerner comes in, he will be really fast maybe in the last 10 minutes compared to Siggy. But the track position is already there for Siggy. Um, I've got something really exciting, ladies and gentlemen. So if you are watching right now on YouTube, if you can hear me, um, I'm going to type in my Twitter at, I think this is the only way I'm really going to be able to do this. I've just been given 
a code for the DTM 2021 for Race Room. So if you go over to Twitter, follow me on Twitter, and I want you to just tweet me your favorite car from DTM history. So whatever, it could be any car from DTM history. So go and tweet me at Actual Vision on Twitter, and I will pick a winner at random um, at, at, during the broadcast, and then I'll DM you the code later on. Again, thank you very much uh, to Race Room for uh, providing us with a code. So, And that will work tonight. It's out tomorrow, but you will actually get early access to it tonight. I know, crazy. <laughs> what a time to be alive. I didn't get a code. Where, where do you get these codes? <laughs> I, I didn't get a code over. Don't worry about it. It's just, I'm just it's, like, we've got this a treat for the viewers. I, I didn't even get a code to give away. You know, I want more followers on Twitter. At Raptors, guys. <laughs> there we go. Um, uh. Probably link that in the chat as well. Uh, but uh, Kevin Siggy across the line. Then, it, what lap time was it? It was a uh, one forty point nine, which is about a tenth, tenth and a half faster than Mark Slender was able to pull off that last lap. So that that's a, a, a well, a slight sign of a good thing for uh, for Kevin Siggy. However, I would have thought you'd be hoping for a little bit more of a delta than that. Uh, yeah. Well, one hundred percent. That's. Uh it's I just, just think this is going to be fun, right? <laughs> this is exactly what we want to see. We, we want it to be the smallest delta possible. We want it to be, you know, two tenths of a second as they come out of the pits and they fire out for, for to the death, effectively. <laughs> um, Florian Hass is still not pit here. This is going to bode really, really well here. What's Hass's lap times like, actually? So let's check Hass's lap time out compared to Siggy's last one. Uh, well, for Hassa, it's, uh, it's, well, it was in the valid last time, but um, it was in the 141s. Uh, so definitely not as good as what uh, Moritz Lohner was able to pull out of the bag. Uh, so, yeah, for Hassa, maybe he's losing a little bit more to Siggy than, than what Lohner is losing to Siggy at the moment. Um, I would say Lohner's still in a great spot right now, considering he's continuing with this long stint. For the end of the race, for, for the vast majority of the end of the race, he will be on the driver, the driver on the fresher tires. He'll be the one with the run of speed. And well, we saw Siggy in the first race defend on equal tires. He wasn't quite able to do it at the very end. What if there's a tire differential now? Um, yeah, I don't know. Crazy, crazy, crazy action here. Uh, it's well, Peter Pliska has come in early from 14th position, which is. Uh, yeah, he's not really going to be right in amongst it. I'm pretty surprised, actually, if we're going to... Uh, sorry to change the subject here, Connery. <laughs> I'm really surprised at Pliska, to be honest. He's been someone that's just, over the last 12 months, really asserted himself on race room, but just hasn't kind of found that outrageous form as of yet. I, I guess he's gone for the AMG. Over the course of the calendar, is that car going to be able to produce something? There's A few of them have picked it for a reason, right? They're going to be strong somewhere. It's just whether they're going to be enough. So I'm a little bit shocked at his pace, really. But P17, he's going to gain some spots, I think, with people coming into the pits. But yeah, just I just expected maybe a little bit more. But I, I guess maybe it's the car. Yeah, uh, possibly. Um, uh, but of course, this is the first round of the season. Maybe some teething issues uh, for Petrovska in this situation. But uh, but yeah, still, still plenty of races to go. But at the same time, like I said at the start of the show, not all that many races, if you know what I mean. It sort of uh, uh, sort of don't, doesn't make any sense in anyone's head, but that's just the way I'm going to phrase it uh, for the moment here. Of course, we got a little bit of a lull in the race. Of course, this is sort of the, the situation where we have half the field that have uh, yet to come down in. We have pretty much half the field uh, with a slight majority that have come down on towards uh, the pit lane for the moment. In fact, that majority is going to grow as Julian Fox and Manuel Rodriguez will head their way in uh, to the safety of pit lane for now. Um, <laughs> Now there's a whole bunch of waiting uh, to be able to see how these sort of strategies pan out. So again, Moritz Lohner, 141 flat that last time by. Um, if we have a look back to the driver of Kevin Siggy, it was not. A, actually, it was a 140.9. So another couple of tenths of a second taken out by Kevin Siggy. However, that advantage is gonna, just going to flip on its head as soon as Lohner comes down towards the pit lane. Yeah, but Siggy can't afford to go flat out, right? Because he's got to save the tyres for later yeah. on in the race. So any time gained right now is a positive, um, but he has to be in a, in a half-decent position when it comes to later on in this race. Uh, so Lerner in a great spot. I think Lerner's favourite to win this, to be honest, because yeah. he is going to have the, the, the last 10 minutes here. I feel like Siggy, is, his pace is going to drop off significantly, uh, whereas Lerner is yet to even change tyres, and he's still <laughs> lapping very, very quickly. He's only two tenths off of... Uh, Siggy with fresh tyres. So, yeah, Lerner is in a phenomenal, phenomenal spot here. We've got Rachel, uh, who's currently up into P4 out of nowhere. Another AMG just doing uh, just doing its stuff. So, yeah, good stuff. 
Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Door Esports really, really showing what they're made of here in the endurance race. Uh, at least as it as it runs with, you know, the slight differences in strategy. It's it's Door Esports 1, 2, uh, 3, 4 at the moment. Um, but, of course, that's mostly because the, the strategy is yet to uh, uh, come full circle, so to speak. Uh, of course, uh, you know, I, I've seen the, the pointing out of the flags out there. Of course, Krippner not actually the Ukrainian. He is, uh, of course, German, but, uh, of course, showing some uh, solidarity there. Uh, with the choice of flag, which is good to see. But we're coming up towards the halfway point of this race now, Luke, and uh, still a lot of unknowns. Yeah, a lot of unknowns. Again, it's, it's one of those, isn't it? When you've got a pit window, you really don't know what the look of the race is going to be until everybody's done their pit stop. So 32 minutes left on the clock. We're waiting for Lerner, Hassa, Kripna, Rachel, Naji. Um, we are waiting for... Well, there's a couple of cars right down the back of the order that we're not going to see pit because they are no longer in the race, are we? Um, which is a bit of a shame for them. But yeah, where does Siggy come out in all of this? I tell you what, I, we're talking about Siggy, but what about Hugfeld? He is still <laughs> only three seconds behind, and he was, what, six seconds behind at one point? He is absolutely flying. Yeah, it's, it's been great. That last lap, though, we, we can't tell what it was because it was an invalid lap which uh, which doesn't help but I, I wish uh, race room would change that still give you the lap time but say but showing in red or something that that shows it inv it's invalid not just the words invalid on my timing screen um but uh, yeah for christopher hoekfeld this is still a very very positive situation especially compared to uh, the previous event uh, in that sprint race of course uh, where it, it wasn't the, the the best of times shall we say for christopher hoekfeld he finished in p9 in that particular event p8 in this race right now of course waiting for the rest of the, the the stops to come through it is looking pretty good of course he's uh, effectively you can judge it you know second well uh, second third place uh, at the moment so that's that's the situation here for Hoekfeld as he pushes his way to the runoff on Variante Alta there just a little bit there we go though Boris Lona Ooh, is in here we go here we go then this is where we're going to find out Lerna will be behind Siggy we, we, we think it'd be very um, interesting if he wasn't uh, Hass is trying to extend this even a bit further so he's gonna be yeah. super quick by the end and here is our net race leader we think so Kevin Siggy who was leading once the pit stop phase started and there is Morris Lerner leaving the pits here again he's, he's on the pit limiter as you can hear Siggy's just gone past him and it is going to be a fair chunk of change in terms of the lead but he is going to be into some serious trouble in terms of his tyres, the same as Hugvelt. Hugvelt currently in second. He actually is, well, again, net second. Of course, there's five drivers yet to pit. But Lerner, he is lurking. He's there or thereabouts. His qualifying wasn't great. He started seventh. But I tell you what, he is looking very strong for this race. It may look like he's a, a long way back, but his tyres are brand new right now. And, well, look at this. Big mistake there from Hugvelt. <laughs> he's feeling the pressure of a DTM esports champion behind him. That's for sure. But he will... He should catch these drivers, especially with 10, 15 minutes to go, very quickly indeed. Yeah, I think so as well. These Ferraris, you know, these these tires aren't going to last too long. Uh, at least the uh, for the rest of the stint, the, the last couple of laps, like you said, are going to be pretty pretty sketchy for them. Of course, you know, like you said, we we don't have any tire wear multiplier on, so it shouldn't be incredibly bad for them. But however, it, it's more about the difference between. The, the, the Ferrari uh, on all tyres and the BMW on, on some uh, relatively newer tyres. That's going to be the big factor uh, here in this one. So Barcelona, of course, he'll take this lap to make sure those tyres in are in the right place. We've got temperatures and pressures. And now that door esports, potentially over this next lap or so, will start trying to reel in the Swedish driver ahead of him. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I think what the, the real interesting factor here is going to be how long is it going to take for Lerner to get past Hookfeld. If, you know, he takes his time, there's every reason to suggest that Siggy may still be able to go out and win this race. So, yeah, it's not all done and dusted yet. We, we kind of expect Lerner to, maybe not now, but over the next 10 minutes, start to really, really Im improve in terms of his uh, lap times. Uh, but as it stands, it is, it's balanced really nicely on a knife edge here. Uh, a few shout outs. Um, again, if you guys would like to win yourself some DTM uh, a DTM code for DTM 2021. It comes out tomorrow. I will be sending it to you on Twitter today uh, if it indeed gets picked by me. Uh, so again, basically, whoever picked my favorite car is going to win, I think. Uh, it's not been well planned, guys. We'll be doing more giveaways across this championship where it'll be much better planned. Um, but yeah, we've got a DTM 2021 code that will be given out today. So if you want to follow me at Actrovision, you can see my tag in the 
uh, YouTube chat. It is indeed on Twitter. And just tweet me your favorite car of all time. Let's do a shout out to a few people who've got involved. Lexar, he said, I love the good old BMW M3 E30. Yes, those cars sound incredible. Um, Luca, the Alpha 155 V6, hands down. That is the loudest car I have ever seen in my life, by the way. It is or heard. My favorite DTM car ever is the 1994 Alpha Romeo V6. Another one from Manda. Uh, and we've got Matty Vargas, who's done the 92 Mustang GT. DTM was so good. Another loud car there. We've got Mr. Git, who said only one season, but that was enough. The Aston Martin. Yeah, of course, beautiful looking car there. It just looks, it's like a GT3, and then you've got the bottom of the car, it just doesn't look anything like the GT3 because of the skirts on it and the big rear wing. It's a crazy, crazy car. Um, Anyway, we're back to the battle on circuit here, Connery. He has caught him. So this is now a, a, a major part of this race. I don't think Hoogveld can hold this BMW up for too long, but how long can he hold him up for Kevin Siggy? Siggy needs it to be for a good couple of laps here. Yeah, this, this is this is absolutely crucial. If Hoogveld can defend this move for one, if not two laps, then that really compromises Lona's race as he heads his way towards the outside through to number one of Tamburello. Hoogveld will try and fight it for all he's worth. He still has the inside. There's a little bit of contact between the two, and Hoogveld remains ahead. Yeah, we've heard nothing about the contacts we've had in this race as well. So there's not been any penalties that shown up on our screen as of yet. So I'm assuming they've been put down as as racing incidents. Again, we only had one view of it, so we can't, you know, uh, distinguish between it as a commentator. But yeah, so it looks like w however it finishes here, we are good to go. As Hook felt there slide <laughs> that car out like he's Sebastian Loeb. And it was, well, effectively a Scandinavian flick, the Swede, pulling it out of the bag there. And of course, being Swedish, he was born with the ability to do that. Uh, as we come then over the top of the hill, down into Aqua Minerale and Morris Lerner has not been able to get the job done. And the more importantly is, it's not even a case of Siggy is you know, the, the gap's staying the same. Because these two are battling, a uh, learner's losing so much time to Siggy. So Siggy, with that, uh, you know, early pit stop, it still may play out to be the best strategy. Hoogveld and Siggy may not be teammates. However, Hoogveld is Siggy's best friend at the moment. Um, of course, Hoogveld, this is all within his own interests as well. If he can fend off Lona for 25 minutes like this, I would be very impressed and I'll call it the best defensive drive I've ever seen. Um, however, I'm not thinking it's at all likely. I think it's delaying the inevitable here is Christopher Hergfeld. And now you can see Mark Sloan is much closer coming off that final corner. We'll have a better run here in towards Tamburello for, for this time. And, and he might get it done this time, but never say never. Hergfeld might have something up his sleeve. Yeah, well, he has to. It's as simple as that. And uh, hopefully it's uh, another Ferrari to make it too wide uh, up his sleeve. But I don't think there is. And again, this is exactly what Lerner did in race one to win it. And he's gone and done exactly the same once again here. But Hoogveld keeps that nose in. It's not going to be enough. It's brilliant from Lerner. And Lerner, of course, our current champion of the DTM Esports, showcasing exactly why he has that number one on his car. Now he's had to chase down Siggy for, what, part two today? Yeah. I am absolutely all for this, Connery. This is going to be great. So what, well, the gap between them is just about four and a half seconds at the moment between uh, Siggy and Lona. And we saw how quickly Lona was able to lock onto the back of Hergfeld. So I think that gap has the potential to come down rather quickly here in this one. Uh, so Siggy has to be very, very careful. You know, inside the final 10, five minutes of this race, uh, Lona might be all over the back of him. So for Siggy, he's got to make sure he has some form of tire performance for those latter portions of the race once he gets involved in an active fight with Moritz Lohner. He needs that to be able to try and keep him behind. Of course, we saw Hergfeld fend off Moritz Lohner for one lap. Kevin Siggy, if it's a final lap deal, he only needs to repeat that and he'll come across the line as the winner. But yeah, this is uh, this is potentially going to get pretty sketchy in the, in the next and well last 24 minutes of this race. By the way, Michael Rachel down on towards the pit lane, and guess who hasn't pitted yet? Hassa, Kripner, Bowden. They are still out there. They'll be going like uh, going like a bat out of hell in the uh, in the final portions of this race as well. Yeah, for sure. They will be so, so fast. Again, pitting this late, it just means you've got fresh tyres. You can go, you know, 100% the whole time round, whereas Siggy has probably had to take a couple of tenths off each lap just to make sure that he's got something left at the end because it's inevitable, I think, that Lerner's going to be, you know, right behind him. Hassa here, he will have to come in in the next eight minutes. The pit window will close. And if you haven't pit, you're done for. It's a DNF. So, uh, yeah, he will come in very, very uh, shortly. Also, uh, just to let everyone know about this giveaway in the chat, uh, sorry it's all rushed and whatnot. We just 
just I didn't plan it. We should be planning it. Uh, we've had confirmation that we will be doing more giveaways across this whole season. Uh, so yeah, don't worry. There'll be like a proper hashtag. It won't be you having to follow me or anything like that. It will be properly done next time around. We're just doing something nice because DTM is coming out tomorrow, uh, the 2021 cars. So if you want to get your hands on it tonight, you know what to do. Uh, so Isaac Price now is kind of, uh, yeah, the, the cork in a bottle as it stands, which is something you don't really say too often about him. He's got Marco Payic in behind and then Gianmarco Fiducci who's in behind. They've all been battling for a top five at some point during this race. It's going to be interesting to see where they filter in in terms of the three that have yet to pit. Uh, I think, like Hassa, uh, Kripner, they, they will be around this kind of mark, probably. I'm sure it will. Well, we're yeah. about to find out. So I think Hassa's into the pit. Yeah, Hassa comes down in now and... Yeah, well, we'll see where he comes out in relation in this battle in particular. Of course, uh, three different manufacturers inv uh, involved in this battle at the moment, with the BMW leading them, with the Mercedes in the middle and the Ferrari at the rear. Uh, uh, Krippner has come down in. Hassa has also come down in at this stage as well. Florian Bowden continuing out there as uh, one of your wildcard drivers, continuing to try and put Leads. laps on that uh, initial point. And yeah, he does, he does lead at least one lap. Yeah, the medium marked car uh, being a Ferrari for Bowden, it, it leads here in the DTM Esports 2022. Uh, so we've got Ferrari leading. He is yet to pit still. Uh, Siggy is in second. Then we've got Lerner. Oh, it's easy, isn't it? Ha yeah, that is. Yeah. Well, Payage has dropped up and oh, moved up position. Price in the top five. Again, Price is just one of those drivers that just gets it done. If there's an opportunity to find some positions, he just gets it done. And I think that he'll probably be in P4 eventually once mm. all is said and done. So brilliant stuff here from Isaac Price. Again, a privateer, just working on his own in this championship, which is something you rarely would say about someone like Isaac, but he is doing a very stellar job indeed. Marco Page again, uh, he is the lead driver outside of the Mercedes, uh, outside of the BMW and Ferrari battle. Again, those two cars have been the, the, the most chosen car. Uh, Biscuit, the next AMG down the list. So Page has done a, a sensational job and he got a decent points haul in race number one. Just getting any points is always good to start things off, but it's going to be a massive points haul in race number two and you assume that that AMG is going to be faster uh, around a few of the other circuits. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been chosen, uh, in my honest opinion. Uh, Price still leads this little group of cars. But yeah, shout out to Bowden. Let's get Bowden on camera. Deserves it. Wild card entrant. He's staying out still. But he's got himself a couple of laps led here. He is represented Deutsche Payment Esports. And yeah, he qualified via the wild card uh, way of getting into this championship, which was not what we covered in our streams, but it was actually uh, held out in the at the Nurburgring GP layout. Um, it, they had some sim rigs set up there. They had tw uh, tw 11 or 12 drivers uh, all there in the DTM BMW um, uh, M4 GT4 car. Uh, so the, the car that they used for the trophy, so the, the BMW M4 trophy car. And they all had the same car. And yeah, these three were the, the three that got it done. Uh, they actually have Moritz Lerner and Marcel Kiefer on the commentary. Uh, you keep racing. Marcel, you keep racing um, there, Moritz. We don't want you taking our jobs. That's fine. You guys crack on with the racing. But yeah, they were commentating on it. It was a really cool event. It was a nice way, a nice avenue for these drivers to come and get involved. Uh, and it's really nice to see one of our wildcard drivers, albeit because of the strategy, uh, out there in the lead in the Ferrari. As we see Isaac Price then, he's got Payich there all over the rear of that BMW. But luckily, it is a BMW M6, which is, as everybody knows, the widest car in the history of motorsport. Um, actually, no, probably second, because the M8 is pretty wide as well. Mm. But yeah, this M6 in this class of field, it's basically like trying to pass a bus that's got the same pace as you. Not ideal. Up the hill we come, Payich will have to indeed try and seize an opportunity a little bit later in the lap time. You've got that Ferrari in the background there, which you would imagine is probably the faster of these two cars at this stage, because he pit a little bit later. Uh, so we'll have better tyres. Yeah, so for Fiducci, this, uh, well, these might be positions for the taking. Of course, still has to deal with that slow line speed difference compared to the BMW. He won't be uh, getting as much of a run as him, but maybe on the Mercedes uh, still uh, might be a possibility in this situation. I've uh, been keeping an eye on, my, on the gap between Siggy and Lona. Last we mentioned it, it was 4.5 seconds. Now it's down to less than 3.5 seconds between Kevin Siggy and Moritz Lona. So Lo Lona's doing a good job to try and catch in the effective race leader at the moment. Of course, we're still waiting for Florian Bowden to head his way down in, and I think he has actually come down in right about now. So Kevin Siggy will re-inherit the race lead, and you can see a representative gap at the top of the order. 3.6 between Siggy and Lona as we got this battle going on for P now P4 and back. 
Yeah, we do. Bowden comes into the pits. Then again, a very good showing from, uh, he's our lead wildcard driver. And I think that's something we need to look out who's going to be the, the kind of wildcard champion as well, because it was uh, a completely different way of qualifying through. And yeah, it's, uh, it's a long pit lane here, especially when you've got to put some tires on. Uh, but we'll be able to go 100% for the next 18 minutes, which is always a bit of a bonus. Uh, onto this battle here then, Isaac Price now P4. It's going to take a big mistake from someone up ahead for him to get a podium. Uh, but ultimately, he, he's just got to try and keep hold of B4. He's got a lot of pressure from behind here. We're on board with Marco Pejic then. And then just in behind them, we have got Gianmarco Fiducci, Fordzilla, Veloce versus Isaac Price, Privateer. Uh, and well, it's going to go down to the wire, that's for sure. It's really going to be about who, who has saved the tyres the best when it comes down to that last five minutes. Last three laps, really, if they've got anything to defend with. Um, Siggy, 3.3 seconds is the advantage. That is coming down very quickly indeed. I think we are going to see a battle for the lead here in the next 17 minutes. Hookveld, though, as much as it, it learned it got past and built a gap up very, very quickly, Hookveld seemed to have steadied the ship here a little bit and actually is chasing him down. Is that the case of Lerner has decided, you know what, my tyres will go off by the end of this. Let's just catch up to Siggy, not straight away. Let's take our time with it and potentially then uh, make the move at the end with better tyres. Well, well, Siggy has had the luxury, at least in the initial portions of this second half of the event, basically, uh, to be able to run his own pace. He had no one around him, no one ahead, no one behind pressuring him. Uh, he was just able to run his own event uh, and keep those tyres in good condition. Lona, on this second stint, he hasn't had that luxury because he had to try and push, he had to try and catch Hoogfeld, he had to get past Hoogfeld, and now he technically has to try and push to try and catch Siggy as well. So, um, so the tyre is going to be a little bit more interesting for him as we saw a little bit of a look from Payich ahead uh, on Isaac Price, not committing to the move just yet. That big slide through the corner as well. Yeah, we saw that earlier on where the car completely lost it, didn't, didn't they? From, from making that small mistake, that was Kripner, I believe. Uh, so yeah, it's so easy. You hit the curb too much there. You've got your loud pedal down. And ultimately, if your wheels are in the air, you can't, your wheels are going to have no friction. So they're going to be rotating too fast for the car once it does hit the ground again. And if you're just slightly too much input with the steering wheel the rear would just go see you later like a happy dog the tail wants to the, the, well the head wants to chase the tail and uh, yeah you swap around so yeah pay it saves it uh, isaac price has just been able to you know get, grab himself a, a couple of extra tenths of a second which at this stage of the race is absolutely massive moritz learning now 2.7 behind it's almost half a second a lap at this stage of the race which is absolutely massive you're looking at what five laps now from now he will catch up and then he will have around about five maybe six laps to actually go and attack siggy so yeah, it's looking very, very good for the German, our current champion. But Siggy, if there's one driver in this world that can just up his level when he needs to, it is indeed Kevin Siggy. This guy is genuinely one of the very best, if not pound for pound, the best out there, I would say at the moment. I think there's three drivers that we could maybe say that. Maybe four. I think we're talking Joshua Rogers. I think we're talking uh, James Baldwin. I think we're talking Erhan Jajowski and Kevin Siggy. I think those four are just overall you know, across multiple titles, the very best out there. I think Lerner is just about getting to that level over the course of multiple titles. But Race Room, this is his playhouse. This is Lerner's playground. He will want to get the win here and start off his, well, his, his defense of his championship, right? The right way. Two wins, it'd be great. Yeah, it, it would be absolutely fantastic. And, uh, well, it will be a bit of a change of pace compared to the previous Race Room Esports uh, events that he's uh, taken part in so far in 2022. Um, it's not been going at all well for him, so this would be a, a great benefit uh, to get one into the bag and uh, uh, to make sure that he doesn't have an absolutely awful 2022. But uh, this Valve P4 is still bubbling along quite nicely. Isaac Price still leads with Payet and Fiducci uh, second and third in the line. Uh, so we're going to have a battle for the race lead. We'll have the battle in this region of the circuit as well. There's going to be a lot to look at in the final 15 minutes of this one, I get the feeling. Uh, gap between the race leaders come down to 2.2 seconds now, just edging over 2.3 as the natural variations in lap time uh, come through. But Payet's getting a very good run off of Acromenorale there. Variante Alta is not really an overtaking point. So despite the good run, you can't really do anything into here. Yeah, well, the only way it is, is, is for Fiducci, I would say. If you try and make, if Payet tries to make a move there on Price, it's Fiducci that will probably gain the spot. It's mm -hmm. that kind of corner, isn't it? Um, I'll tell you what, Fiducci is very, very close here. And this is a really nice dynamic because Isaac Price has been around forever. Payet has been around for a good couple of years. You've got Fiducci is relatively new to the top end of sim racing. So we've got 
all three echelons of the of the spectrum. And right now, it's the the old bull leading the young calf. So good to see good to see Isaac Price still performing at the level that we do come to expect from him. Uh, and I'm sure he's got his lucky leather jacket on as well as he's racing because that thing brings him a whole heap of luck. Yeah, he was uh, one of the competitors in the in the first uh, in the first ever uh, world's fastest gamer, I believe it was. Um, so uh, unfortunately, he he wasn't able to, to get the grand prize at the end of that. That was, of course, uh, Rudy Van Bruen, which is uh, another famous uh, sim racer that you uh, might know at home. Uh, but whatever uh, happened to Rudy? Whatever yeah, happened to him? What, what, what happened to him? We'll, we'll never know. But uh, <laughs> but uh, for these guys, of course, you know they, they do want to get to that level where they're able to come top in in championships like this one and, and, and go for glory um of course you know for these guys uh, with, with just inside the top five here you know they're, they're within the right margin in terms of points to be able to uh, uh get that chance to be able to um at least have that trial in in the dtm trophy car at the end of the season but it's uh, uh it's going to take quite a lot of effort from these guys but that's the thing that's the interesting dynamic about this competition it is the top five yeah. that will advance to a sighting session during the dtm season so they'll be invited to and again it's not confirmed which race it is as of yet but they will be invited to a race during this season and it, the best candidate once they've been judged and you know they'll be put through a few tests and stuff they will then pick the winner themselves who will get a full dtm 2023 uh dtm trophy fully paid season so it's just super, super exciting here. We've got that opportunity. Uh, of course, we've got many drivers that have come through the ranks of sim racing to make it to this point. Um, none more so than Tim Heineman. Tim Heineman indeed came from the race room background and he won the DTM trophy inaugural season. Uh, last season, we had Ben Green, who actually sim races in a Janetta GT4 shell that he had a crash in when he was a youngster. As we see a potential move here by Marco Payet, he's going to try and take a page out of Moritz Lerner's book. Not quite going to work out. Isaac Price, though, defends it valiantly. He He's just about going to hold on. Has that inside line. BMW Power should get him out of jail here. We head down in towards four and five. But yeah, Tim Heinemann, the inaugural champion. Ben Green, last season's champion for 2021. Again, he has that big sim rig at home. He, he, he does a lot of sim racing himself. He was battling with Will Tregurtha. Will Tregurtha, who is you know racing in all of the biggest sim racing competitions in the world, most notably the Le Mans Esports Series that we saw um, nearly a couple of months ago. It was running for the last sort of eight months. And, um, you know, other drivers like Morris Lerner. Morris Lerner got his seat because of sim racing. So sim racing is a massive, massive step in the right direction now towards actually getting into the real world. There's a lot of people out there that want that transition to happen. But there's also equally a lot of people out there that just want to be the best sim racer in the world as well. So there's the best of both worlds here. You get that opportunity, but also you're known as the best, you know, driver within this class of car, within this game. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of different ways of looking at it come then up towards that final chicane, come down in towards Ravazza here with 10 minutes, 42 seconds to go. It is Siggy by 1.4 seconds to Moritz Lerner. We are going to see that battle, Connery. And I look at that, there it is. He is absolutely chasing him down. Siggy's going to see that in his rear view mirror now. And Siggy's not the type of driver to get flustered, but the fact that he knows about the tire situation here, that might be a cause for change. Yeah, this is... This is going to be a big one for Siggy. If he's able to hold off Lona here uh, for the laps that we have remaining, then this will be one of the most incredible wins that he's probably pulled off throughout the uh, entirety of his career. He's certainly up against it. He's certainly the underdog, uh, I get the feeling. Even though we have 10 minutes left, the gap is still over a second. As soon as Lona gets within that slipstream range, which he'll do probably at the end of this lap, he will be reeling him in so much. And uh, Siggy, well, the ball will be in his court then. It's going to have to be how wide can he make a Ferrari? Yeah, I don't think he needs to. I think it's a case of the top five go through, right? He's already got P2 today. Uh, if he gets another P2, it's not the worst thing in the world. You're going to be at least P2 in the championship because Lerner is the driver that's won both races. So you guaranteed P2 in the championship. It doesn't matter if you finish P1 or P5. I guess when it comes to the sighting session, it will go in your favor that you potentially won, I guess. So there is that as yeah. well. But for me, I think it's a case of you don't want to defend too hard. You don't want to put yourself in a position of potentially gathering penalties. So I think that you just let it happen. It's very obvious he's quicker. It's almost by a second a lap now. As we see here, Fiducci under a lot of pressure at the back of this little train. Fiducci has got Hassa, who pit very late as well. So he's going to be very quick. He was leading the race for uh, quite a long period of time because he stayed out so late. And with nine minutes to go, he probably will make pretty easy work of all three of these cars. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that as they head their way down the hill into the two Ravatsas at the very end of the lap here uh, at Imola. And 
but uh, has to, he'll, you'll be able to carry the momentum through these medium speed left handers uh, better than uh, everyone else ahead due to those due to that fresh rubber and uh, he'll get a good drive off as well to be able to help him out uh, whether or not he'll be able to make a move in towards turn number one he might be able to get one done over Fiducci we'll just watch this one run through that BMW closing up closing up looking to the inside can't quite get it done or at least doesn't want to go for the almighty send down the inside there he remains in line but uh, yeah this is uh, potentially going to be a whole bunch of fun for Florian Hassers. he's up against cars that are on much older tyres uh, he's uh, going to be looking down the inside here once again can't quite get it done in towards Villeneuve, but the exit of Villeneuve is going to work out in his favour with a slight mistake from Fiducci, and that's one done already. Yeah, look at the traction that BMW is able to gather on the exit of the corner. Just goes to show that tyre wear is going to be a massive factor during this whole championship. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of learning uh, curves for drivers here. It looks like Siggy, again, he's not being caught as quickly as he once was. Is it a case of that he was saving something for this period of race? He knows this was going to happen at some point. Um, it's just all about whether he can just hold on here. I, I don't think he can. I think seven and a half minutes would be far too long with Moritz Lerner. I think anyone else behind him, potentially it's on. But yeah, Lerner is just a wily old fox when it comes to this point. And what a performance it would have been today. Because not only did he have to overtake Siggy in the first race to win it, he's had to come from P7 in this race if he is to go on and win this. Even if he finishes in P2, he is the form driver right now because he's able to make overtakes and he's able to just make progress during races. Siggy got a good launch out of the final corner there. So not going to gain as much time on this little, uh, on this, well, long pit straight uh, than he might have been able to as Morris Lohner. Gap still over a second by the time they get in into the breaking zone for Tamburello. So, uh, uh, Siggy, I, I think he's sort of practicing at the moment, so uh, practicing trying to get that run out of the final corner because he knows if he's able to nail that every single time, it makes Lona's life more difficult once he gets close enough to have a look down the inside. Uh, so we look further behind because we've got action going on. Marco Ooh, Payne's yeah. all sorts of out of shape. Oh, we got, that's, a, that's a massive mistake there. I think Lerner's just made a big, massive mistake as well, uh, to be completely honest with you. He jumped over the curbs there. It looks like quite a delta. He's nine tenths behind still, but that would not has that, that definitely cost him some time for sure. But yeah, we saw there pay. It's just trying to take a chance, really. I think it's a case of you want to attack the car in front, just have a bit of insurance because you know Hassa is so fast behind. Hassa in that blue BMW there, the number 87, Change tyres so much later than everybody else. For people watching at home, if you're not uh, just tuned in, and you're like, why is that BMW so much faster? The tyres are just in such better nick at this stage of the race, especially through this middle sector. So the AMG here is kind of a case of, look, I can probably defend for five minutes if I can get one car between us. But pay it, you can see they're snaking on the exit uh, of Aqua Minerale to come up towards that final chicane. I'm just, I think it's going to be like taking, taking sweets from a baby, uh, <laughs> effectively, but... Can they work together? It's almost a case of they've been battling each other at Payich now and Price. Can they work together significantly enough to now stop Hass from get, Hassel getting both of them? Uh, the lead's still nine tenths of a second. Siggy, this is where he comes into his own. When he's under some severe pressure, he finds something extra. Right now, he is finding something extra. He is. It's been a very good past couple of laps. He's in the uh, 1 minute 40.7 uh, at the moment, which is uh, definitely uh, not too shabby in terms of pace on older tyres in the Ferrari. He still has it, and Moritz Lohner has to try and find a response. He is edging him in, uh, edging him in a little bit closer, bit by bit per lap, about a tenth of a second or so. And of course, the closer Lohner gets, the more of the effects of the slipstream he will feel to that Ferrari ahead as well. So it just gets uh, worse and worse for Kevin Siggy as uh, the battle for P4. Uh, we have to have eyes on the back of our heads here. We have to have eyes everywhere um, because uh, we might have action for the very front. We have, might have action here as well. Oh, yeah. Well, here we go. Hassa dive up the inside in towards the hairpin. Hits the apex perfectly. Payich is forced to go out wide there. Maybe a little bit of door banging there. Nothing too crazy. But actually, in all fairness, it's had an adverse effect on Hassa. Look at Fiducci. Fiducci's got a little bit of an overlap. Not quite going to be close enough, I don't think. And no, he's not. But that, oh, he nearly took full advantage there. We come over Piratella. And that was nearly Hassa taking, well, trying to take one step forward, but ultimately nearly going two steps back. And he's in the same position. Siggy is again now being caught here. Four minutes to go in this race. Three laps remaining. And I'm going to say it. I did did rec uh, say that it was going to be three laps to go here where Lerner will really go at it. And I think that might be the case here. Siggy in that very famous red line livery. Can he produce one more moment of magic this week? Is it 
Is he capable of doing so with the tyres underneath that Ferrari? Six tenths of a second is the advantage. That BMW should close up very quickly indeed. And well, it's almost going to be a case of Lerner will know what Siggy had for breakfast. He's going to be that close in a minute as we come up then towards turn number one. And there we go. Oh, crikey. Look how much, look how much, look how much later he can break. The tyres are in just in such better nick. And yeah, as soon as he gets an opportunity, it's going to be very, very easy. But if you're Moritz Lerner, you've got to be patient here. Don't just make the move and force it for the sake of it. You've got to absolutely be patient with this and get it done cleanly. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Lona, you see how much more speed he's able to carry in through the chicanes there, uh, looking to try and get the traction off of Tosa. The advantage goes to the Ferrari that time, funnily enough. So uh, Siggy keeps himself ahead for now. We will have a brief little look back to this battle for P4 because this is all oh. sorts of going on, going on here. As we see Price and Hasser and uh, Payich uh, all involved in this on their way through Tosa. This is absolutely crazy stuff, but we will focus on the race speed here, Luke. It's uh, coming up to two and a half minutes to go. Uh, can Siggy hold on to this? Yeah, it's going to be two laps remaining here, effectively. It becomes a, a real sprint race. But it is the BMW that has the advantage here. It has the better tyres by about 20 minutes uh, because we have Siggy in the Ferrari who came in with, what, 20 minutes done in this race? Yeah, 40 minutes. He's going to be, by the end of this race, have done 40 minutes on the tyres, whereas Lerner would have done 18 so far. So, yeah, almost double in terms of tyre wear on Siggy's car. So can Lerner close the gap here? Look at the traction getting out there. Again, Siggy just seems Whoa. to be able to, to make something work on the exit of that final corner. I just don't think it's enough, though. Look at this BMW close up. They come across the start finish line. And actually, is he going to be close enough? I don't think he is. We saw him being able to outbreak Siggy quite significantly down into his turn board last time round. And this is how he did it in race number one. He took the outside line. He's already done it once today in this race. And Siggy is not going to leave that room again here. And wow, with one and a half laps to go now, that's the biggest overtaking opportunity. And wow, Siggy can chalk that up to, I'm still in the lead here. And wow, can you do it one more time? There's still plenty of overtaking opportunities around this circuit, but that is the most... Well, Whoa. prominent, I would say. Look at the slide there, Siggy. He's on the absolute limit. The car, he takes that real defensive line then through the hairpin. And, well, can Moritz learn to get on this power really, really early? And, again, the Ferrari is able to lay that power down. Yeah, this is surprising considering we saw the opposite in the sprint race. Uh, Siggy knows what he needs to do now. He, he's absolutely nailed the exit to these corners, and that might be his saving grace as he takes the... Uh, well, takes the runoff uh, through, yeah, through uh, Piratella there, the left-hander, the very fast left-hander in the middle of the lap. Look at how close Lona, Lona's overcommitted. That loses him for the time, and his last opportunity to get a move done on into turn number one is coming up. So that is absolutely huge. Siggy, he might have been able, to, he might have been given a gift. Yeah, I think he has been. Siggy, again, just keeping it between the mayor and the mustard, keeping it on that racing line and forcing Moritz Lerner to produce some magic. That's the difference here. He's, he's forcing Lerner to just go outside of his comfort zone. And as it stands, again, the BMW is going to be able to break a lot later here than the Ferrari. He's got a big enough advantage here. We know that he gets really good traction out of the final corner, regardless of whether he's got bubblegum tires or not. Siggy is doing what Siggy does. One lap remains here. Ladies and gentlemen, and it comes down to this. Can Moritz Lerner, our current ETM Esports champion, winner from race number one, had to make the overtake on Siggy in race number one as well in the same fashion as we're seeing him try right now. Can he indeed do it one more time? Less than a lap to go here, and he makes another mistake there, Siggy. Forcing the issue, his strategy call to go in early right now is working. Hookfeld, P3, Price still holding on to P4. Hasser is right behind him as well. Payich then is also in, in close proximity in P6. Fiducci and we've now got Ottaviani joined onto the back of that group there. So there's a battle for P4. Uh, Let's just very momentarily check that out as we've got the middle sector here. The Ferrari's going to be quick through there. Yeah, Hasser is not catching up to Isaac Price. Isaac Price is the wily old fox, although he does dip it into the gravel there. That's going to have slowed him down, takes that defensive line. Hassa has got the overlap around the outside. Will Price leave the room on the outside? He has had to leave the room around the outside here. Florian Hassa has not got the overlap anymore. Isaac Price just about getting enough traction out of that corner up the hill here. Hassa trying to force Price offline, but again, it's not going to work out. Payich putting the pressure on there potentially for a P4 himself. Over the final chicane we go, struggling for any kind of traction here for Kevin Siggy. But it looks like if he can just 
negotiate the final two corners here at Imola. We'll take a victory here in the DTM Esports 2022. Moritz Lerner patiently waiting for a mistake. I don't think it's quite going to be enough here. And I tell you what, I thought Lerner had this all day long and twice on Sundays. It's not quite going to work out. Kevin Siggy went into the pits early. What a strategy call it was. The Team Redline driver is going to take victory here in race two of the DTM Esports 2022. It is second position for Moritz Lerner. Great drive from him. Hoogveld then is going to take P3, but look at his train of cars. Isaac Price, the price is right, as he will take P4. We've then got Florian Hassa, who is going to take P5. Payich is in P6. Fiducci in P7. And Otto Viani then does take P8. Kripner and Dinya are your top 10. My, oh my, what a tension-filled last couple of laps of this race. That was absolutely crazy. Moritz Lohner, I think it was the mistakes at the end there that sealed his fate. He had the tire performance, he had the opportunities. But on that second to last lap, that little issue coming out of Vacuum Minerali in towards Variante Alta, that sealed it. He, he couldn't get those extra tenths of a second back to be able to make that move on the start of the final lap in towards turn number one. And we saw how strong Siggy was everywhere else on this circuit here today. What a race win for Kevin Siggy for Team Redline by less than half a second. Yes, yeah, four tenths of a second, then Siggy to Lerner, Hugvelt, third, Price, Hassa, Pejic, Viducci, Ottaviani, Kripner, and Dinya are your top ten. Uh, an incredible performance from all of those ten drivers. We go a little bit further back then, it's Pliska, it's Raschel, we've then got Dorniden, Pfeiffer, uh, Vermeulen, who qualified really well uh, in race number one. It's just not had the best of finishes in terms of the actual races. Gassner, Naji, Keithley, Hinches, and Bodin does get a couple of points then as our lead wildcard driver. Uh, we then head to what will be the rest of the group. And actually, it's the second wildcard driver in P21. We'll get a point as well. Fox then, our uh, final wildcard driver, P22. Then we've got Pringer, Whitford, Rodriguez, Markovic, Shiarshal, Rudiger, and Wanner, who are all DNFs. Connery, what an unbelievable race. Kevin Siggy versus Moritz Lerner. Do I want to see more of that? Absolutely. <laughs> Take my money. That, that was incredible. I, I was on the edge of my seat for the entirety of those final four or five laps there. That was that was crazy because you saw Lona, you saw him close in bit by bit by bit. And, you know, he just about got there. He had an opportunity that was defended by Kevin Siggy. And it was only that one defense that was needed because Lona bottled it in that uh, second to last lap there, made the crucial error, allowed Siggy to have enough of a buffer. And then Siggy takes the race win for the first endurance race of the season in the 2022 DTM Esports Championship. Yeah, incredible stuff. Again, you know, I could say the same about the whole top 10. Strategy was a huge call from all of them. And some came in early, some came in late. So it worked for some, it didn't work for others. It was uh, something that really is going to be fun to watch over the course of the rest of the season. I need to just get my breath back here momentarily. I think Connery is absolutely the same here. So we're just going to go for a very quick commercial break and have some messages from our partners. But wow, what a show we've had so far. Auto Hero ist dein Online-Shop für Gebrauchtwagen. Wir verkaufen nur Autos aus unserem eigenen Bestand. Jedes ist von unseren Kfz-Experten general überholt und rundum aufbereitet. Und du erhältst ein Jahr Garantie. So unbeschwert kann Autokauf sein. Finde jetzt dein Auto bei Auto Hero. <lacht>
So there you have it. Tomorrow, DTM 2021, including those beautiful Ferraris, comes to race room. And, well, we had a giveaway running throughout the stream today. We will have a proper one next time around. I can I promise you that. We just didn't have it planned properly, to be fair. Uh, the winner is Manda. You've already had it sent to you. Uh, and, well, they sent me the their favorite car ever was the Alfa Romeo 1994 V6. And, again, I've had the pleasure of commentating on that car. Uh, it's actually an ITC car um, as well. Uh, in 1996 is the year that uh, the car that I been commentating on in the DTM classics and it's the loudest car I've ever heard it is the most ridiculous thing ever so yeah congratulations uh, and enjoy have a few laps tonight why not um right Connery we're not gonna um, mess around here we're not gonna stand here all night talking uh, we are gonna now show you exactly how the standings of this championships are after two races here at Imola so here we go it is Moritz Lerner that leads by one point Kevin Siggy is on 76 in second spot um so yeah that it comes down to the qualifying points being added as well uh, fastest lap award goes to moritz Lerner, a 140.291 that was done in uh, the races as well so yeah congratulations to him uh, isaac price in third spot the guy just knows how to get things done he's on 51 points we've got leonard kripner on 48 christopher hugvelt who had an incredible race number two remember his race one didn't go well but the the fact that he got it done in race two means he is in that top five and then we've got a two-way tie florian hassa is on 45 points 45 then for alessandro ottaviani uh, jam marco fiducci is on 42 29 each then for marco Pech and axel the Malin. So that is your top 10 heading into the next one. Let's check out then the calendar for this year so you guys know when to tune in to the DTM Esports 2022. We've just had Imola. Uh, we then go to the Norris Ring, which is on the 24th of March. So where have you been watching it today? Just make sure you've got that subscribed to it so you can watch once again. Uh, then we head to the Lausitz Ring on the 7th of April. And then in April is just, well, it's fun time April by the looks of things because we've got Lausitz Ring. We've got Spa, Francochamp, Red Bull Ring, and Portimao. Hashtag we love DTM, baby. Oh, yes. It's great to have the DTM Esports 2022 back. But again, I'm not going to have a massive old in outro here. You've seen what you wanted to see. You've heard what you wanted to hear. I do want to say a massive, massive thank you to all of the partners from DTM. A massive thank you to DTM for giving Esports a, a massive platform to work with. To all of the drivers, to all of you watching at home. But a special thank you to Connery here. Connery, it's been an absolute pleasure working with you once again. And hopefully you enjoyed yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to be back in action. Of course, we covered the shootouts here for the DTM Esports season and, and to get into the main season like this with a, with a fantastic event at Imola. I don't think we could have really asked for anything better at this stage. You know, seeing that endurance race come to a head right at the very end. I mean, it could have just been, as always in, in motorsports, just one more lap for Morris Lona to try and get it done. He had an opportunity, unfortunately blew it. But there we go. That, that, is, that is just racing sometimes and we got to look to the next round. Absolutely. Well, Morris Lerner is the current DTM Esports champion from 2020. It's 2022. The same result remains. So ev from everybody from behind the scenes and me and Connery, we wish you a very nice evening. And we'll catch you next time when we head to the Norris Ring for the DTM Esports 2022.